Tech Yellow Jackets, Terry Gannon, Tim Brant, and Lewis Johnson. We welcome you. Georgia Tech won the coin toss. They elected to defer to the second half. So it'll be Dave Frakes kicking off with Leon Johnson, the star tailback of North Carolina, back at his own end zone awaiting the kick. Both clubs at 2-0. Georgia Tech with two ACC wins so far. North Carolina with a big upset on the road at Syracuse two weeks ago. And Frakes' kickoff goes out of bounds inside the five-yard line. So it'll be a good start for North Carolina as I'm sure they'll bring it out to the 35. And Tim, an important part of this game, Chris Keldorf, and he's been great for them so far. The junior college transfer, look at his numbers, 218 yards two weeks ago against Syracuse and the ACC Offensive Player of the Week. Well, the best thing about him is he has not made many errors. I mean, you mentioned the ACC back of the week. That's because he was 22 of 33, two touchdowns against Syracuse, but he's only thrown one interception all year. Consequently, what takes place is the fact that, you know, he's, he's reading this new package that the offensive coordinator Greg Davis has put in, and he's adjusted to it quite well. So North Carolina takes over at the 35-yard line. Chris Watson, Leon Johnson, the backs, the offset eye. North Carolina with a new offensive coordinator in Greg Davis this year, and they've opened it up. Here's Leon Johnson straight ahead, fights his way for maybe two on first down. And the Chili's offensive backs and receivers, Leon Johnson leads the way. The number two scorer in Carolina history, number two receiver. He is seventh in rushing, and he also is second in terms of touchdowns, and a guy who has had to adapt to the new offensive scheme, but has adapted very well. He has done a terrific job. Eight catches against Syracuse, and then you see the... The offensive line in front of them, it's a big, strong offensive line, good feet. It's not as big as they've had in the past when you look at Gethers' yeah, 272 and Saturday's 280 and Honeycutt's 280, but they've got great feet. They move and they've done a nice job. Out of the shotgun, here's Chris Watson with the fake and Kildorf on the run. The ball is loose and not going to balance, fortunately, for North Carolina. Jermaine Miles, the defensive end from Brooklyn, New York, had him on the run and knocked it out of his hand. And the linebacking crew in a good one. Both of these teams really led by their linebackers. And Ron Rogers, second team All-ACC a year ago, and second in the ACC with 145 tackles right behind Keith Brooking, I should say. Brooking should have been All-Conference. He averaged 13 tackles a game in 95. He's one of the best in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And then Clements is uh, coming to his own. He's all over the field. He's a former safety. They can run you down from about 30 yards. They love what Jimmy Clements has done so far in the year. And the other two get all the publicity, but he's been terrific. May Brown in motion on third and five. Keldorf with a straight drop and a lot of time. Over the middle, complete to midfield. Brown with the catch and a first down for the Tar Heels. Well, May Brown, a sophomore out of Reedsville, North Carolina. As you look at the defense for Georgia Tech and a solid front four, but then the, the secondary really led by Nate Perryman, a three-year starter, second team all ACC, and a guy who can flat burn it. He returns punts, he can fly. He led the entire conference in pass breakups. He's one of the best man-to-man -man guys in the East, certainly uh, in the East and probably in the country. Freddie Jones, the tight end in motion, the pitch to Leon Johnson. Fights his way and gains about four after he stopped initially at the line of scrimmage by Ron Rogers. Well, there's no question what needs to happen today, UNC trying to establish that running game early on, but as you look at how the two teams compare, Georgia Tech only giving up 67 yards on the ground. It'll be tough to run against them today. Well, even though they give up over 300 total offense, if you look at the scoring, they don't give up many points. So you may have a drive like Carolina has right now where you move the chains once and you, you eat up some time, but, you know, they're pretty good about keeping you out of the end zone. Second and six, Keldo off the throw. He's got a man, L.C. Stevens, but through his hands. And Jason Bostic on the coverage, he knocked it out of his hands. And let's go very quickly up to New York to check in with John Saunders. John? Terry, Alabama against Arkansas in the SEC. It's been a defensive struggle. Freddie Kitchens here, hooking up with Michael Vaughn. Nine yards, nice little catch as he pulls it out of the grasp of the defender. The Crimson tied up now by ten with about two left. Terry? All right, John, thank you very much. Third and six for the Tar Heels at the 46-yard line of Georgia Tech on their first drive of the ballgame. Brown in motion to the near side. They split the back. Straight drop for Keldor. Over the middle, wide open is Brown. Inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Keith Brooking made the tackle, but Timmy, there was no one around him over the middle of the field. So far, Carolina taking advantage of those great linebackers. They're so active now. They're going to come, and they're going to try to put some pressure. So you watch this. He comes and sits down, and Brown is right there where the linebackers would be. Instead of getting into the hook zone, they came hard. He dropped right behind the linebackers. Mike D had to make the tackle from the safety spot. 
gain of 16 when you look at the North Carolina attack. They have actually completed less passes than they did a year ago at this point. Everybody talks about them opening it up, but they have a different scheme, and you talk to the coaches, they're throwing better passes, they said. This one to Chris Watson inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. Mike D made the stop there, but they'll use the fullback out of the backfield. You know what I like most about this is what Greg Davis told us yesterday. Everything's going to be high percentage. It's just the dink and dunk type passes. He's not going for the whole thing. He's not going deep. What they're doing is they're picking their spots in the seams, bringing them around in where the linebackers were, the vacated spots. They're finding their areas, and they're doing it effectively in this drive. It's amazing the effect that the 49ers and all their success have had it, not only on the NFL, but college football as well. A little bit of a West Coast offense. Now they go to the eye with Watson and Johnson. Uh, second and four, here's Leon. Looking for room, and there isn't any. What a scrape off by Ron Rogers from the middle linebacker spot. Came all the way down and made that tackle when the outside guys turned him back in. Sean Simmons, the defensive end, was also there to turn him back in. What's right in the middle of your screen is going to be number 50. Now the play goes away. Now he'll scrape, he'll scrape. See number 50 there? Middle of your screen. Now there he is. Boom. Also on the left side, you got Clemens, you got Brooking. All the linebackers come in, and they've got a piece of this. Actually, it's Brooking who kind of plays the inside. It's Rodgers who turns it back into Brookings. Great job by both linebackers. Ninth play of the drive coming up for the Heels. They've got a four-receiver set on third and six. Out of the backfield, Johnson with a lot of room. He's got a first down and much more down to the 10-yard line. Jason Bostic, the left cornerback, made the stop at a gain of 17 for the Heels, and they just keep moving down the field. You know, the, and the Keldorf is in a rhythm now. Watch him. He feels so comfortable, looks so comfortable. He's just not even full arming it. He's just kind of just dinking and dunking, as we said, and putting those real short little passes. And for Johnson, if you get him into an open area like that, here's a slasher, a guy that can really run and pick up that yardage. And so many weapons offensively for the heel. First down at the 10, I believe it's first and goal. Just outside the 10. Here's Leon bouncing outside, can't get there. They had him by the legs. Good pursuit by that Georgia Tech defense after the initial contact. As good as this Georgia Tech defense is, it has had trouble early on in the ball games. Not so much in the last game, but we saw it against NC State. They fell back 10-0 before the ball game even started. Here they've got good pursuit, though. And again, Brooking is there first. He kind of ties him up, and then here comes Witherspoon. And they all get involved in this thing. This is good pursuit. Look at Rodgers. He takes on some blockers. Brooking scrapes down the line and comes and gets finished off. So second and goal from the nine. Watson in motion. Johnson, the fake. Keldor, out to the tight end. Freddie Jones stopped at the six-yard line. Nate Perryman on the stop, but they like to go to Freddie Jones as well, and he is a load. Jones, 6'5", 255 pounds, a senior out of Landover, Maryland, and a big target. Look at the play action fake and how all the gold helmets go that way. Now you come back in the fold back, and your tight end just drags out into the flat. Tremendous play. Great call by Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator. Boy, has he made a difference in this Carolina offensive scheme? Uh. And they've adapted very well and are very confident right now in running it. They can get a first down inside the one. It's third and six. Keldor over the middle through the hands of Freddie Jones. And maybe needed a little more touch on that pass. I'll tell you, the pass was there. Freddie Jones has to make that catch. It was a little bit hard, as you mentioned, but that has to be caught. He was right there. See, instead of six now, you're going to get three out of it. That was a touchdown. Well, a moral victory for Georgia Tech after the long drive by Carolina, even if they do give up this field goal. Georgia Leary's got to feel pretty good about what they did defensively. You look at Josh McGee, a redshirt freshman out of Pearl, Mississippi, and a try of 23 yards. And it is good. Josh McGee now four for four on the year. Having a perfect year so far, and the heels lead at 3 nothing. In an age of streamlining and downsizing. Now the Tar Heels lead at 3-0 after the 13-play drive, although it did stall inside the 10-yard line. So both teams walking away from that with some positive feelings. Yeah, I think there's more positive on the other side, though. I, I think you were right when you said George O'Leary has to feel like he dodged that mm -hmm. bullet. You know, giving up three points instead of the seven that it looked like they were going to get is huge for them. Again, you know, they, they let up the passes, they let them have the yardage, but they didn't give up many points, and that's been the trait of this defense through the season thus far. 
Now, Brian Schmitz will kick it off with the heels. Back deep, Charlie Rogers and Chris Haney. High hopes for both of these clubs this year. When they started the season, Georgia Larry said he wanted Georgia Tech to win one more game than they did a year ago. They went 6-5. and five. They were just a couple of plays, really, in two different games away from being a bowl team last year. Schmitz is kick. A short one. This is Haney at his own 15. Still on his feet, bouncing around and outside the 30 to the 31-yard line. So Georgia Tech will start there on their first offensive series of the ball game and led by Joe Hamilton, a youngster who has really impressed everyone with all the poise and confidence. A redshirt freshman out of St. Stephen, South Carolina, and high school player of the year in South Carolina. Playing with Arthur Middleton, the wide out, so they're very accustomed to the pass and catch between the two. But a lot of pressure on him today. It's a different defense, more quickness, with the heels today going up top to Middleton on first down and incomplete, but he goes right after it. And the Chili starting lineups, the offensive backs and receivers, C.J. Williams, second team All-ACC a year ago, over 1,000 yards last year, and only needs 98 to be a 2,000-yard rusher. He would be the sixth in Georgia Tech history, but Middleton, a speedster at wideout, a guy who really will haul in the tough catch for you. And Wiley had over 100 yards a week ago against Wake Forest, Curtis McGee, Leads the way, the senior out of Marshville, North Carolina. 31 consecutive starts for him on that offensive line. Here's Wiley, the up back. And he may have gotten two yards, but that's about it. Vania Holiday, defensive tackle, made the stop. Kavayu Summer Mays, the middle linebacker and another good linebacking core here, Timmy. Terry, when you talk about linebacker cores, I mean, this, to me, is one of the best in the country, if not the best. Hamilton, Mays, and Simmons all the way across the front. They're 240, 245, and 30. They're all over six foot four. It's what you look for in a pro linebacker, much less a college linebacker. They can all run real well. They've got a great nose for the ball. They read things very well. They adjust. I mean, they're the, the total package. You look at these two linebacking cores. The top tackle is really in the ACC. Last year, here's Hamilton. He can run it and may have a first down outside the 40-yard line. Rick Terry. Got him, but it may have been too late. Yeah, and that's what concerns the coaches more than anything is his ability to get out of there when there's nothing available and make something positive. As you look at the defense, the rest of the defense, of course, Omar Brown is the guy we talk about because uh, he's the free safety and he's making the calls back there. He's getting everybody in the right position, but this is a very talented group. Not only the linebackers, but up front and in the secondary, they have had a tremendous year. They rank second in the country in total defense, and I think that's exactly what Carl Torbors expected out of them this year to be one of the best. In the, in the entire U.S. And second in passing defense, too. Georgia Tech likes to run, though. Charles Wiley gets the call off left tackle and falls ahead for about three yards. Rick Terry there. Again, you look at the matchup, the offense versus the defense, it really is interesting. North Carolina second in the nation in total defense and against the pass, but Georgia Tech first in the ACC in total offense and running the football. What you're looking at right there is the story of this game. This offense against the highly vaunted defense of North Carolina. How successful can the Yellow Jackets be is the question. Williams and Wiley in the backfield on second and six. Middleton in motion. Straight drop. Over the middle and he's popped. Middleton had it but Omar Brown, we told you he could hit. Wow. It'll make you think about coming over the middle the next time. This is why we highlighted Brown. It's not only making the calls, but he's known throughout the league as a big hitter. This is what you dream of as a secondary guy. Middleton, look at his head, looking back at the quarterback, never sees Brown sitting there with his tail tucked, just ready to explode through his legs and up through the receiver's chin. Well, I'll tell you what, that'll rattle your feelings for dry balls in your forehead. That's a great hit by a safety. Which is not a good feeling when your eyeballs go up in your forehead. Third and six now for Tech. Middleton back the other way in motion. Hamilton evading the rush. Has room up the middle, but looks to be just short of the first down. Across midfield to the 49 of Carolina. James Hamilton was in there, but he got away from him in the backfield. You know, when we talked to Carl Torbush, the defensive coordinator of Carolina, we said, how concerned are you? about containment, keeping him in the pocket. He says it's not that, it's what he does up the middle. Watch, he buys time and now sees everything's closed off, everybody's covered and there's pressure coming from the outside so he tucks it 
he finds holes when they're not there. I mean, he can get through a seam. He's a hide-and-seek guy because he's not very big, so he hides behind the big bodies, seeks a little crease, and gets through it. Dre Bly back at his own 10-yard line, awaiting the punt of Rodney Williams. Averaging just under 37, and it's measurement time, but they knew they were short, wanted to find out how much. A little more than a foot, it looks like. All right, now, if you're Georgia Tech, you've got to say, all right, Curtis McGee's over there. He's 290. You've got Michael Minter's 300. Page is up there. Salaj is 300. Jackson's 290. Let's just get behind these big old offensive linemen and let's go for it. But instead, they're on the road, so they say, all right, we're going to punt it. We're going to try to put them back. Yeah, but I think O'Leary heard you talking because George is sending him back out there. All right, good call. I like that. I'd go for it. Well, you mentioned all the big bodies up front. They're facing a few on the defensive front from North Carolina as well, though. And Rick Terry, Bonnie Holiday, Hollis. All, right. all right, then let's watch the pit. Let's watch the white jerseys fire out and see who gets the advantage. Fourth and a little over a foot. Williams in the air, and he has a first down. We'll see how they spot it, but certainly cross that marker if it's right on the sidelines. You know, they talk about C.J. Williams having that huge vertical leap. Of course, he's a former basketball player at Georgia Tech. That wasn't so much vertical. I'm telling you, he got horizontal and went through the air like a missile. More than enough for the first. Well, so George O'Leary had sent the punting team on. And maybe his offensive coordinator, Pat Watson, in talking with him upstairs, they decided to go with it. Why not? When you've got the offensive line, you got a guy who can sky like that. So first down at the 48 of the heels. Straight ahead, not much running room for Charles Wiley. You know, Wiley, the second leading rusher on this team, listed as the fullback, but they'll give it to him as much as they give it to C.J. Williams. At 111 yards last week against Wake Forest. You know, Terry, coming into this season, one of the things the coaches were concerned about, sure, their offensive line was 290 pounds, but how dominant can they be? So far, they've done a pretty good job. Mike Sheridan in motion to the near side on second and eight. Flags on the ground, though. Out to the tight end, that's Grant Bainham, his first catch of the afternoon, but they're going to bring it back, I do believe. Grant Bainham, a senior out of North Augusta, South Carolina. And they will go to him at 14 catches a year ago. Brown saying, go ahead and walk this one off. Greg Bainham is on everybody's list in the National Football League as a potential tight end in the bigs. He's 6'5", 250 pounds. His dad played in the NFL. Yeah. Well, tonight on ABC, another brand new episode of Second Noah. Then the network premiere of a police squad classic, Naked Gun, 33 and a third. The final insult, Tim Brandt's favorite movie of all time, starring <laughs> Leslie Nielsen and Priscilla Presley. All tonight on ABC. Those are great movies. Yeah, they're funny. They are funny. So second and 13 for Tech. Hamilton on the roll near side. Tucks it under. Can't get outside though. Brought down at the 48. The original line of scrimmage. And they ran him down. James Hamilton showing some speed outside. Showing disrespect for the other Hamilton. Hamilton on Hamilton. Of course, there's a size difference. I mean, James Hamilton, 6'5", 240 pounds. Joe Hamilton's only 5'10", 189. Watch this now. All right, so he, by that little pump fake, he gets around the corner, but now here comes the pursuit. Watch, he gets clotheslined, and that's only the beginning. Before he got to the ground, he had flipped little Joe over twice. James, a three-year starter and part of this linebacking core that is on the Butkus list, all three of them. The preseason Butkus list for the top linebacker in the country. Hamilton under pressure and down he goes at the 41-yard line. Greg Ellis, the junior out of Wendell, North Carolina. A loss of 11. And, Timmy, the pressure and the speed very apparent early on. Speed is definitely what the problem is. All right, now you see there's pretty good coverage here. This is what Hamilton is looking at. So now he's trying to buy time, tries to stay back there, and he does too long. Greg Ellis takes him down with that great speed backside. Ronnie Williams was on a moment ago. Had to go back to the sideline. And the low line drive kick. Great fly. Fields it his own 12. Looks to the near side, gets a big block. It tripped up at the 20-yard line. 
So the Eels take over. They lead 3 0. It's new and it's nifty, made for the smart, the intelligent thrifty. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers and Napa Auto Parts stores. At Napa, we keep America running. Now the bell tower here and the tall pine trees surrounding Keenan Stadium. Beautiful setting here in Chapel Hill. Built in the late 20s, 1927, Keenan Stadium was in a big uh, construction site right on the... Uh, in the back side of one end zone, they're building new football offices for all the coaches and should be ready in 1997. And first down, Chris Watson, the intended receiver, but incomplete. You know, I saw the coaches take that offensive unit, put them on the bench, start talking to them. A lot of guys still standing around for Georgia Tech talking because they know it was that illegal shift and that penalty that took them out and brought them back. And then the big sack on the blind side from Hamilton, those two plays stopped a pretty good drive. Yeah, they were inside uh, North Carolina territory down about the 47-yard line. What a great day for football today. 77 degrees, slightly overcast. Second and ten now out of the shotgun is Cutler. The inside give to Watson. Can't find much room. Across the 20 to the 22. Keith Brooking was there and already we've called Brooking and Rogers quite a bit. If you watch the left hand of your screen, you'll see number eight. That's Mike D. He takes an inside stunt. He gets caught in there, but then the outside kind of turns it back in. Brookie made a nice play to scrape to the outside and force things back in. And D came back and helped make the tackle. Now watch, you'll see number 35, the right hand of your screen, turn it back in. And then there's D8 helping him out. They run that stunt a lot. And North Carolina was actually looking for it. Jason Peace, redshirt freshman out of Durham, now in there. Four receiver set for the heels on third and eight. Stepping up, throwing over the middle, intended for Nay Brown, incomplete Mike D. Had him covered well. And that's a play that Brown was open on on that first drive. He got it for a big game. This time, D covers it well. Well, and good pressure by Georgia Tech. I think that's what made the play. Chris Keldorf could feel the pressure around him. Got a little antsy back there. Stepped up. Did not want to run. He's not a running quarterback. He's huge, though. 6'5", 250 for a quarterback. Now, he's 250 now. He was 260 before two a day. Derek DePriest for his first punt of the afternoon at his own 10. Now Harvey Middleton, a wide out, fields it at the 43. Straight up the gut across midfield into the 47-yard line of North Carolina. It's only a 36-yard punt, a 10-yard return by Middleton. It's Georgia Tech's football when we come back. Back to last year in the matchup between these two teams. For Georgia Tech, Charles Wiley taking the ball 13 yards up the middle. It gives the Texters a 20-12 lead, actually 20-10, but the heels rally in the last minute, make it 27-25. But Ron Rogers with the interception to preserve the Georgia Tech victory, and that was really one of the high points of Georgia Tech season. But on the other side of the coin, Timmy, maybe the low point of the North Carolina season, and they've talked about it since then, wanting to make up for that loss. They felt that that really started them off on the downward side and uh, they felt they should have won that game that they pl outplayed Georgia Tech last year. You know, when you look over the last 10 years, the games between these two, they've all been close. I think, what, eight of them have been a touchdown or less? Yeah. Although Georgia Tech has not won in Keenan Stadium since 1945. On first down, here comes Hamilton on the option. Keeps it inside the 40 to the 39. Although that statistic's a little bit misleading. What have they played? Six games? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was waiting for that, but uh, it didn't come for a while. Boy, look at Georgia winning big over Wake Forest today. What about the service academies? Army wins. Service academy still unbeaten. And they won't be happy uh, about six miles up the road on the Duke campus. Navy plays SMU a little bit later. That's this evening. Chris Myers now in at tight end, but they get to CJ Williams trying to get outside. Almost gets there. Has enough for the first down, though. Greg Williams, the strong safety, had him by the ankle and pulled him down. Boy, and I'll tell you this. If Williams does not have that ankle, C.J. is gone because that was the last line of defense. Another fine run. You know, he's got that easy gliding style and then goes limp, and you think you're bringing him down, and all of a sudden he explodes again like he just did with Williams. Well, what an outstanding talent he is. He and Leon Johnson, not unlike in styles in terms of that gliding easy style. You sometimes... Want them to hit the hole very hard, but that's not their style. 
first and ten at the 33. Hamilton play action. Under pressure. Really under pressure. Down he goes at the 42nd sack of the afternoon. Bonnie Holiday was there along with Kay Mays. And a loss of six. Boy, great coverage though in the secondary. They only had one receiver that he's really looking for. It's down the right sideline. Now, the safety comes over and causes some problems, and Hamilton sees that, so that's a good read. But by the time he pulls it back down, you've got all these guys all over him, and he has nowhere to go. Boy, what a great play by Greg Williams to come over and help Robert Williams in the coverage. After the loss of six, it is now second and 16 at the 39. He almost lost the foot with enough time to cause C.J. Williams to go down, courtesy of Vonnie Holiday. Two huge plays in a row by Holiday. And Timmy, it looked like Hamilton almost dropped that football, and that split second was enough time for the defensive line to get a jump on Williams. George O'Leary started this season with a brand new center, Craig Page, and a brand new quarterback, Joe Hamilton. He's been concerned about that battery ever since the season began. Now, they really haven't any prob had any problems. At that time, it, I don't know if it was the snap or whether Hamilton just uh, seemed to bobble it, but that did throw the timing of the playoff. Wiley, the only man in the backfield now on third and 18, four receiver. Tipped and could have been picked off. But again, Hamilton pressured by Simmons and Holiday and ended up on his backside. In fact, Simmons may have been the man who tipped that pass, but big old number 90 in the backfield again on that series. Well, you know the defense has done a nice job when you've got fourth down and almost 20 yards to get to the uh, first down markers. Yep. Williams on for another punt. Nice snap. Great Y watches this one sail into the end zone. Well, they almost had it and about the one yard line but the momentum carried him in so a punt of 41 yards he'd like a couple of those yards back now full lineup of college football today of course and next saturday as well next saturday at 3 30 eastern 2 30 central on abc sports ucla dances with the wolverines of eighth ranked michigan north carolina of course down at florida state in tallahassee that ought to be a good one they're trying not to look ahead to that one today penn state taking on wisconsin colorado at texas a m who has been struggling click your local listings for the game on your abc station and the game's available on pay-per-view next saturday First down at the 20, straight ahead goes Johnson for about three yards. Yeah, now that's the kind of football you really have to like that. If you're a football fan, it, it's straight ahead, no fair dodging. I mean, they came right off the tackle. It was straight ahead blocking. You had the, the linebackers right there, Ron Rogers and, and the guys from Shepard and Bradford. And who won the battle? Carolina did. They picked up four. You know, we talked a lot about the linebackers of each team. But uh, this defensive front, not a bad one of Georgia Tech either. Derek Shepard, a junior of Dayton, Ohio. Big, strong, and extremely quick. Number 92. And time runs out on the first quarter here in Chapel Hill. Well, a great football set at the overcast, but ideal weather. And the heels leading by a field goal. fans here at Keenan Stadium, about 50,000 of them. Did you ever do that, Timmy? No, I can't say that I did. Our heels lead the Yellow Jackets. Low scoring first quarter, not a shock either. This is uh, one of those games in which uh, Georgia Tech is going to try to run the football on North Carolina. They were able to do it last year with success, but the uh, Carolina defense all over Joe Hamilton so far. Chris Keldorf took them 59 yards on 13 plays, but they were stopped inside the 10, and the field goal, the only points on the board right now. Second and six at the 24. Leon has a hold. Johnson across the 30, and he has a first down. And we send you up to New York to John Saunders. John, what do you have for us? Well, Terry, the Michigan Wolverines trying to avoid the letdown after last week's big win at Colorado. Scott Dreisbach lobs this one in there. Called in by Russell Shaw. They take a 7-0 lead over Boston College. Terry. John, that was a heck of a catch in the corner of the end zone. How about the Notre Dame... Texas game too. What a finish, huh? Notre Dame winning with a field goal in the last play of the game. 
really hurt our preparation time for this one. We were watching that game up until the end. This one's almost picked off. Boy, great read by Jason Bostic. Number four almost had the pick, probably should have, but he had a great break on the ball. You know, if you look at these statistics, the team that has dominated the time of possession has won every time over the last 10 years. So go all the way down to the bottom, look at time of possession. The slight advantage goes to Georgia Tech, and yet they trail in this game by three points. And they have yet to complete a pass on the afternoon. No passing yards for Georgia Tech. Mac Brown obviously pleased with the way his defense has played throughout the year so far. And no running room. Straight into that defensive line of Georgia Tech. Tough to run against. Leon Johnson finding things tough against Keith Brookett. You know, you talk about Leon Johnson, though, Timmy, and we talked about the new system in place here. He only had 48 yards against Syracuse in a big win two weeks ago, but he's really settled with this system. He said, that's fine. If I don't run as much or get as much yard, as long as we're winning, that's fine. Now, Tech is taking the run away from us, so they bring all their skilled people in, go to shotgun, and show pass. Keldorf 0 for his last four, however, though. Over the middle, it dropped. Darren Ashford, the intended receiver, he had it right in his midst. Good coverage by Jimmy Clements, but you're right, that ball's got to be caught. He still didn't have enough for the first down, so they would have had to punt anyway. So he made two mistakes. Didn't get down as far as the chains, and then dropped the ball. So Derek DePriest comes on for his second punt of the afternoon. Harvey Middleton, who George O'Leary is now using to return punts. He was not listed as a punt returner, but he decides to use him. Of course, Derek Stiegel, the all-everything wideout, is out with a torn ACL. Here's Middleton at the 33. Has a seat to the outside and a lot of room. Decrease the kicker to beat and he tripped up at the 30-yard line. Barely got a piece of him. Greg Ellis had a footer. He was gone. Penalty for Georgia Leary and Georgia Tech. A hold on the return, so what was an almost 40-yard return goes all the way back to the 48 of North Carolina. And you look at the total yards so far, zero under the passing category for Georgia Tech. A lot of good pressure from North Carolina. It's an outstanding defense that they have. But you know you have to and say the penalties are killing them. The holding here, the illegal shift earlier, but see if you can pick it up. They're calling this the hold right here, and, uh, well, it is. No question, he's got his jersey, and it's called an Edward Ferguson of the Yellow Jackets. He just reached out and grabbed his sleeve. That'll drive George O'Leary nuts. Tough Irishman turned this program dramatically. Former defensive coordinator took over a 1-10 team. Got them believing they can beat anybody now. It was with the San Diego Chargers. Second go-round with Georgia Tech. He was a defensive coordinator one other time there, but back now is the head coach, C.J. Williams. No running room over the left side. Right at the line of scrimmage, Rick Terry had a hold of him. You know, we told you at the beginning of the telecast that North Carolina's game plan was to load up to put everybody tackle to tackle and try to stop that run of Georgia Tech's. They're doing that effectively. They are trying to challenge Georgia Tech to beat them with a pass. If you're going to beat us, you're going to have to do it passing the ball. And right now, Georgia Tech has that big goose egg zero on the board. They have had no success offensively with the pass. Tech had 536 total yards a week ago, but 309 on the ground against Wake Forest. Second and 12. Here is Hamilton on the run. Flags on the play and a lot of room for Hamilton. Inside the 15, inside the 10 to the 7, but there's a flag down at midfield and penalties have just killed Georgia Tech here early on. It's holding against the Yellow Jackets again. Timmy, they have had some big plays called back. Oh, a 42-yard run, and they're bringing it all away. Well, not only that, but we talked about the illegal shift when they had a pretty good drive yeah. going. Then you had the big return by Harvey Middleton. That was called back because of holding. Then you have this big return or this big run by Hamilton on the option. And now this is called back by holding. Mistakes will kill you. You've got to be fundamentally sound. Of course, George O'Leary talking to the officials, and you can just guess what he's saying now. You better call him on both sides if you're going to be that way. Well, we've gotten a look, though, at Joe Hamilton, what he can do. He's run the option a number of times and, and also has scrambled out of the pocket 
and right up the center of the field and that that does seem to be where he's most dangerous i mean he he finds a seam and he's going to beat you yeah but see now you've got second down and more than 20. you can't get it all on one player at least you can't think that way offensively he's going to run up the middle again but he's tripped up behind the line of scrimmage rick terry again had a hold of him, the senior out of Lexington, North Carolina. Boy, Rick Terry's an NFL-type prospect, too. They love him, 6'4", 295-pounder. Well, the roar of the Tiger tonight on ESPN. Jerry DiNardo, after a great year last year, leading the LSU Tigers against the Tigers of Auburn at Jordan-Harris Stadium. That should be a great matchup tonight at 7.30, only on ESPN. Tough place to play, and... Uh, LSU uh, going to find a lot of people in the SEC ready for revenge this year. Had a great year under Donato last year. Hamilton under the gun. Goes behind his man and it's picked off. Dre Bly with the interception up the far sideline inside the 10 and knocked out at the five-yard line. His second interception of the year and he almost took it all the way back. Bad decision by a young quarterback. You've got to live through these. You've got to let him mature. He bought time, felt like he could force the pass in there, and he just couldn't do it. He had pressure right from the get-go. He feels it coming, steps up beyond it, but watch. Now he says, hey, I've got to get this thing in there. Tries to force it where there is no room. He goes down, and Bly makes the pick. Look at the coverage here. There's no way he's going to get this in. There's nobody open. He thinks by running up, the coverage is going to let down. Maybe had he thrown more to the inside, he had a better chance. But Bly had him sitting on his right hip, made the pick, and takes it all the way back down inside the 10-yard line. And I'm telling you, folks, that is a huge turnover right there. Carolina now at the 6 can take this thing to a 10-point ball game. He brought it back 44 yards, and it does rest right now on the 6-yard line. Charles Wiley was shaken up on that play, but he did walk off under his own power. There's Tito Simpson. He was one of the guys in there with pressure on Hamilton. Trying to jam it in where they had already bracketed receivers. Inside and out, couldn't force it in at the interception. Jonathan Linton and Maurice McGregor now. The backs in the eye for North Carolina. First and goal at the six-yard line penalties and now the turnover the thing that has just killed georgia tech here in the first half this is a great challenge here for the yellow jacket defense eight starters from last year's six and five club they run it rank around the uh, the nation's leaders versus the run here they go mcgregor stopped right at the line of scrimmage he may have gotten to the five that's it keith brooking the first man to meet him but a host of yellow jacket jerseys around him including nate perriman See, this is going to be interesting, Terry. This is a defense that ranked fourth in the nation last year against the run. They only gave up 99 yards a game. Now, this year, they, too, have been strong against the run. So here you have Carolina at the five. It'll bring up second down and goal. It's a challenge for that defense. They're going to say, you've got to beat us with the pass. But look at them jamming up here between the tackles. They got good outside leverage. You got the linebackers filling. There's 35 booking again. You give those linebackers a shot. They aren't going to let you in the end zone. See if they go with a little play action here to get to the corner. Linton and McGregor, the backs in the backfield. Stevens and Brown, the receivers to the near side, and Kellogg wants the throw. Behind the intended receiver, Stevens, he had him too. Nate Perryman on the coverage, but Keldorf would like to have that one back. You know, he was open, but it was a difficult throw for a big quarterback, rolling left to throw back right. I'm wondering why Keldorf didn't tuck it away and run it himself. He had a little bit of a gap there, and he's got that huge body. 250 yards, he was already isolated, or 250 pounds, already isolated on the little quarterbacks. Watch him out here. All right, now here comes Brooking. He put that shoulder down there. He could have gotten him by Brooking. He's 250 pounds. He's got to use that. Third and goal from the five. Brown in motion to the near side. Keldorf to throw, a lot of time. The fade up to Freddie Jones, and what a grab! What a catch by the senior tight end out of Landover, Maryland. He's six feet five inches tall, but that wasn't only his height, Sammy. That was great hands on that catch. 
We asked the coaches, they said he's an all-conference type receiver. He's big, he's tough, and he's got soft hands. That one just seemed to lie in a pillow like when it hit that big, big hand of his. Watch this. This is not bad coverage. Not bad coverage at all. He takes that big right hand and just pulls it down. That's 6-5 working on 5-9, though. So a big advantage for Jones and a good decision by Keldorf just to throw it up in the air and allow Freddie Jones to go get it. McGee on for the extra point. And he hooked this one. He hooked the extra point. It's no good. Keldorf with the celebration and the heels up 9-0 in the second. It was an incredible grab, one-handed. You know, during the commercial, we were still talking about it. That was a phenomenal catch. You mentioned they used his size, which, in fact, they did. He had a size advantage. But the bottom line is the ball was thrown so high that even he could only go up with one hand and pull it down with his right hand and just... That was a phenomenal big-time catch. They say he's going to play in the National Football League. That was a, an NFL-type catch. Yeah. Came into the game with eight catches and a touchdown on the year. They're using him a lot this year. Here's Brian Schmitz to kick off for the heels. Gil Grant, the great scout for years with the Dallas Cowboys, now still in the NFL doing the scouting is here. Well, he got an eyeful with Freddie Jones on that touchdown catch. Well, you got to like him just for his size, first of all. 6'5", 255, but uh, all ACC last year. He can, he can run. Charlie Rogers returning this one out across the 25, out to about the 29-yard line. So a good return for Rogers in Georgia Tech. And let's go down to the third member of our crew, Lewis Johnson. Lewis, what do you have? Yo, listen, there's a big story that broke this week in Chapel Hill about a man who played a little basketball back here in 1982. He's gone on to Chicago to play a little basketball. We're talking about Michael Jordan, of course. I am joined by Chancellor Hooker here, and, and what is the big story? Well, the big story, Lewis, is that this week Michael Jordan gave us a million dollars to the School of Social Work for an institute for families. That's awesome. Now, one of the let's go back up and catch the next play, Chancellor. All right, Lewis, we'll do this very quickly. Go back down to you. First down at the 29-yard line for the Yellow Jackets, trying to get something going offensively. C.J. Williams bounces out a gain of about three. Lewis? Terry, thanks a lot. Chancellor, it's oftentimes uh, athletes will give money back to the athletic institution, but now he's gone and done something different than that. That, that says a lot about Michael, huh? Well, Michael has helped Carolina in so many ways, and this is just another example of the way in which he's enabled us to help the working people of North Carolina and the families of North Carolina. Quickly tell me, how has the campus responded and gotten back together after the hurricane? The campus came together beautifully. We, we caught off classes one afternoon. The students all came out and helped clean up the campus. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much, Chancellor. Terry? All right, Lewis, C.J. Williams lost it for a moment, barely got it back. Ronnie Holiday was in there to make sure it didn't go anywhere. A loss of seven, and it brings up third and long. Terry, Carolina's playing very well, but you know, you have to be honest here. George O'Leary, I can hear his pregame or his halftime talk now saying, you guys are killing yourselves. You quit like penalties. Now here, C.J. takes his eyes off. He's looking for the hole before he makes the catch, puts the ball on the ground. You cannot run with the ball before you have it, and C.J. Williams knows better than that. When you're under pressure all afternoon, though, you have a tendency to look up before that ball gets there. You know they're going to be in the backfield, and there they are again. That defensive front has been terrific for the heels this afternoon. Well, you know what they're doing, though? They're giving up a lot of yardage. Georgia Tech is, is hurting itself, and then they get them in a situation where it's third and 15. They can lay their ears back and come hard. So Georgia Tech's letting them get in positions where they can win and where they can be effective defensively. Well, there's no way the Yellow Jackets can get in second and long, third and long all afternoon, as Williams lost one on that last. And here's Rodney Williams to punt away. He does, but they don't have the kind of firepower offensively, and Hamilton, not the veteran thrower, that they need to come back from that. Dre Bly going backwards now to the near side. Picks up a block, but it's not enough. And he goes down at the 27-yard line, punt of 41 yards, a return of minus six. He lost six on that. Keenan Stadium, Chapel Hill, 9-0. Tar Heels leading Georgia Tech. Boy, that guy right there, Terry, he has had a spectacular first quarter. There are nine points on the board for Carolina. But when you look at uh, Keith Brooking, the linebacker, he has been on, on almost every tackle and has made some big stops that could have gone for big plays. First down for the heels. Maurice McGregor gets the call and carries a couple of people out to the 29-yard line. McGregor, the backup for Leon Johnson, a junior out of Marietta, Georgia. Scored his first college touchdown against Georgia Tech a couple of years ago. Well, 
Next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central on ABC Sports. There is your lineup. A good one, UCLA in Ann Arbor to take on the Wolverines. Carolina, of course, travels to Tallahassee. Penn State, number five against Wisconsin. And Timmy and I will be in College Station to watch Colorado and Texas A&M. Check with your local cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view as well. Keldorf under pressure, and he's going to go down in the backfield. What a get it. great play by Jermaine Miles. Just used a, a power move and just pushed uh, old Thomas back into the backfield there. Of course, Miles was the sack leader last year. Junior college transfer from Nassau Community College in New York, but he was an All-American as a junior college player. He's 6'5", 261 player, uh, pounder, and I tell you, he is just a load. The youngest of eight children in his family. You mentioned he led them in sacks last year, and uh, look at the total yards, 16 for Georgia Tech. Youngest of eight, so he knew the meaning of a depth chart before he ever played sports. <laughs> you got it. Miles with three sacks already in this young year. Kildor, a lot of time over the middle. Nate Brown, the intended, but he may not have been the intended. He was there along with Jason Peace. There were two receivers in the area. Now the Irish with a big win in a big game. Number nine and number six. That's as big a game as Texas has had down in Austin in a long time. Yeah, and Texas uh, was seemingly in charge late, and then Freddie Brown threw the, uh, or James Brown rather, threw the interception. They came down and tied it, and they got the field goal in the last play of the game. Big win for the Irish. Ooh, like Brian Schmidt's now on for the punt for DePriest, who was punting before this one back to the 30, Harvey Middleton. Bounces outside and the ball is on the turf, but it was out of and another flag sideline as well and another flag. Yeah, 41-yard punt, but that yellow flag is something that the uh, Yellow Jackets have seen much too often on the turf here at Keenan. Well, I tell you what, George O'Leary is going to be hot. That's that's another penalty that has just killed field position for him. He has not been able to get the field position that at times it looked like his team has. Well, this is what you expect if you're a coach in the first game of the season, but uh, you're in your third game and after two wins, two wins in the ACC, you don't expect to see this many penalties. Had to move out of Atlanta. Training camp in Dallanega, about 60 miles north of Atlanta. Small town, really helped them, George O'Leary said, actually. Yeah, they started calling the uh, Dahlonega the Yellow Jackets. Ellie Rogers this time, bouncing outside the 40, a big gain to the 46-yard line. Rogers, a sophomore out of Cliffwood, New Jersey, tripped up by James Hamilton, but a gain of 23, and Tim, that's what you were talking about earlier. They've had some big gains and found some holes in this North Carolina defense. The penalties have just hurt them. Yeah, and C.J. Williams started to take a beating a little bit, so they bring young Charlie Rogers in. He's the sophomore at a Clipswood, New Jersey. Tremendous speed. He had 99 yards against Wake Forest last week. We got a sophomore in Rogers and a freshman now in Virgil Johnson at fullback. First down at the 45, and here comes Rogers again. Pretty good game. It's and interesting. In you know, he's not that much different than C.J. Williams, but what he did is, for, for instance, C.J. had... Uh, a tough time getting going last week against Wake, so they put Charlie Rogers in, and whatever the changeup was, whatever the difference was, even though he's a little bit smaller, they're both very quick, he had those 99 yards, and it really made a difference. And being led right now by Johnson, the freshman at the fullback spot, a guy out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. A lot of recruits from North Carolina on his Georgia Tech roster, and of course the heels load up in this state. Second and four, Hamilton gives to Rogers left side again. He's got some running room. Can't get to the first down marker, though. Omar Brown hit him and made sure he didn't get to the 45. He, along with Brian Simmons, the stop, and it brings up third and a long one. Omar with that 15-pound advantage in that matchup, and he made every pound count because it looked like Rogers was going to get to the sticks, and it looked like Rogers certainly had the momentum, and Omar just took him sideways. C.J. Williams now in, and they bring in Matt Guba. Full house backfield. Here goes C.J. Has the first down, but he's popped. Omar hit him. I'm going to tell you something. Oh. Omar Brown knows the difference between come here and sick him. I mean, he just, he levels people. But Williams 
moves the chains for Georgia Tech. Well, Monday night at 8 Eastern, Dominique Mochianu and some of her solid goal American Olympic teammates get together with the world's best gymnast. An hour of dazzling exhibition performances, the Tour of Olympic Gymnast Champion. And then get ready for Dan Marino and the Dolphins. They take on the 3-0 Indianapolis Colts for the lead in the AFC East. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football on Monday night right here on ABC. Terry, you're right. Too many flags for a ball game like this. Both clubs 2-0. Both clubs trying to make an impact in the nation and the standings and also in this conference. And right now it's a sloppy ball game. And most of the infractions have come against Georgia Tech. I think it's going against Carolina, though. It looks, looks like, like they jump first. That's only the first penalty against Carolina. Georgia Tech has had four big ones. Four for 35 yards, but they've been huge. Take a look at this now. You'll see where on the left side of your line they jump. The right side, they shift, and now look, they come over because they think the Tech guy's flinched. Here goes Hamilton on the roll, wants to toss it, but keeps it, and fights his way down to the 36. Marcus Dow, the sophomore out of Thomasville, North Carolina, big number 78 on the stop. Had to get to the 34-yard line for the first down. There goes Marcus. Now what you have to be impressed with too from Georgia Tech Tim is is Joe Hamilton's ability to tuck it and run and make those decisions when to keep it and run and it'll only get better here's Charlie Rogers on the give he may have a first down inside the 35 to the 34 should have the first depending on the mark but again they're testing that Carolina defense good fire out by the offensive line Page got a block Salaj got one Jackson I thought really second down and short that they'd take a shot a little bit and let Hamilton put it up in the air. It's a waste down. You can always come back and get the first on third down. Great down to throw on. At the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has awarded nearly $6 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. It's almost like George O'Leary saying, all right, guys, here we come. Straight ahead, we're coming at you, and we're just running the ball. Rogers, the only setback on first and ten and he dropped the football Carolina may have it at the 35 and they do Brandon Spoon number 44 it looked like he got there and another big break for the Tar Heels well you know you've got to like the Tar Heels but at the same time Georgia Tech's just giving them the ball game watch this Joe Hamilton does not get the ball to where he should he's reaching there actually he does he puts it right on the three and it hits the breastplate off the shoulder pads. Consequently, Charlie Rogers never gets it. I didn't think Hamilton got there originally, but he obviously did. Put the ball right on the number three, but he put it up high and it came off the chest plate. Well, you got a redshirt freshman and a sophomore as you had a look at Brandon Spoon, but Rojo Leary cannot be happy with the way his team has played. They really haven't played that bad. It's just been mistakes. As North Carolina takes over, not much running room there, but it's nine to nothing with about three and a half minutes left in the first half. I mean, an odd first half because you get the feeling that Carolina has done anything but dominate this first half, but that's the story right there. Georgia Tech's turnovers and penalties. See, now I just, I don't think North Carolina has dominated. I'm saying you, you get the story that they've done anything oh, but dominate. Absolutely, this. they have not. Yeah, good point. I think. Thank you. Whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> Keldorf to throw on second and nine complete the Nay Brown still up across midfield and a first down for the Tar Heels as they move the chains right now let's step away and hear from John Saunders for a moment Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96, I'll be joined by Todd Blackledge. We'll have all the day's scores and highlights, including the thriller of the year thus far between Notre Dame and Texas. It went down to the wire. It's coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96. What a game that was, too. Good one going on here, too. 9 nothing. Nate Brown in motion to the far side. Here's Leon Johnson looking for room. Not finding a whole lot. Mike D. 
a strong safety, played a little free safety as well, but he's been a three-year starter. He got there first. You have the feeling that Carolina is having a tough time running the football, but the passing game's been very solid. They scored with the uh, touchdown pass to Freddie Jones. Also, just before this play, they threw the uh, the pass to Nate Brown. That was an outstanding play. Nate Brown just did a little hook, but Keldor put it right there for him, so the passing game's been clicking. Let's see if they go a little bit more to that. Just over two minutes left until halftime. Second and seven for the heel. Keldorf. This one tipped up in the air. Watch out. Still tips. An incomplete. How did anyone not get that? I mean, Shepard tipped it at the line of scrimmage. And you, about had, four a, guys you had a bet on that being caught or intercepted, one or the other. Then it's a jump ball. Everybody goes through the old tip drill of practice. That one was up so high, I think three or four guys had a chance to get it. I'm surprised Keldorf didn't find the lane to throw it, though. He's 6'5". Keldorf, a great story, really. A guy who has been so patient, went to Utah State. They wanted to make him a tight end, transferred to junior college, went to a couple of different junior colleges, went to Dean Smith's basket basketball camp a few years ago, left the campus, and now here he is, starting on a major college level. This one incomplete. L.C. Stevens, the intended receiver. You know, in this new offense that Greg Davis has brought with him when he came to Carolina and Mac Brown's working with him, the receivers have an option. If the defender plays you inside, you go outside. If he plays you outside, you go inside. If he's playing you soft, you hook. That time, Stevens went to the right and Keldorf threw to the left. So it was a misinterpretation of the new offense. Not much chance for timing on those patterns in terms of that break until that receiver makes the decision which way he's going to go. Nate Perriman back and watches this one settle inside the 10-yard line. And this is going to go out of bounds at the 8. A punt of 36 yards into the corner. So Georgia Tech with tough field position here. And a minute 41 left until halftime. Now the other thing about North Carolina's offense, not only is Keldorf a new man on campus and a number of other youngsters there, but Octavius Barnes, who injured his knee last year in the bowl game, he's a guy who had more receiving yards in his first two years than anyone in Carolina history, but he comes back and it takes him a while to work into this system because it's an entirely new system to him as well. Now the clock becomes a factor for Tech with 1.41 left in the half. C.J. Williams stopped in the backfield and looked for room. There wasn't any there. He just stopped and took a look. No, I, and Pat Watson's up here in the booth, and Pat Watson's knowing, hey, look, the team, the offense is backed up here. They're inside the 10, down by the 5. Timeout's taken by Carolina here because Carolina wants to get the ball back and have a chance. But this is what I was talking about in the new offense. Now, you see Keldorf is trying to read Stevens. Now, I'm going to ask you to stop this as soon as they come and stop right there and see Stevens was coming this way, the ball was thrown out there, and then when the ball finally was read by Stevens, then he tried to go get it, but it was too late because he broke and then had to come back and get it rather than just taking a break to where the ball was. It was a misread. The quarterback and the wide receiver have to be on the same page in this new offensive system they're running, and the receiver has all of the options. Now, now this is what Pat Watson right here, the offensive coordinator at Georgia Tech, saying, hey, look, we're backed up, but we're going to have to throw the ball. We want to use the last 133 of this clock effectively and try to get some points on the board, but we don't want to give them another opportunity to score. So he's just trying to first play, kept on the ground. We'll see if they're going to throw it here at all. The timeout continues. Let's step away and hear about some upcoming shows on ABC from New York. Far into his own territory, Joe Hamilton 0 for 4 with one interception. He may have to to, to uh, keep North Carolina from getting it back here, try to move the chains. Well, Carolina takes another timeout, feeling very strongly that they're going to get it back. They know they've got this this defense. It's it's ranked number two in the country. It's got uh, Georgia Tech held here now to third and very, very long, almost eight yards. So would they take that other timeout saying, all right, we're going to stop the clock. We're going to stop them third. We're going to get the ball back. And if we have them back here, we're going to have good field position. So this is a very smart play by uh, Carl Torbush. Mac Brown and the Carolina Tar Heels. You know, we talked to Mac Brown yesterday at length about his program, and he's really not only changed the offensive system this year, but the way he's approaching the season. Now, he wants his players really to enjoy every game. And he, but he did talk about how important the number 11 ranking is to his team, because this is a guy who's 
started his career at North Carolina, at least uh, not his career, but his tenure here. One in ten, one in ten. Slowly built up. He's now been to four straight bowl games, had six straight winning seasons, and he feels like the perception out there maybe doesn't meet reality. They've been more successful than the average fan thinks. And the number 11 ranking, very important. He wants to get into the top ten. Third and a long seven here. Almost eight. Hamilton straight drop. Now wants to run. Not going to happen. Drop at the 11-yard line, so the Heels will get the football back after the upcoming punt. Carolina thought they had a fumble there, and the official said no as he was down, his knee had touched. So the Tar Heels are going to get it back in outstanding field position here, and still a lot of time left. And they take 13 by taking those two timeouts, and this time out here, you know, they left themselves a lot of time to work with for Keldewood. Well, I've known Mac Brown a long time, and I'll tell you what, he has done a marvelous job here at Carolina, as you mentioned. I mean, the biggest thing I can see is the kids believe that they can play with anybody. It's really similar if you look at the two programs, not on a year-to-year -year basis what has happened in, in the success, but, you know, Mac Brown, 1-10, 1-10 in in his first two years here, now building up the program. Georgia Tech won a national championship or a share of it back in 1990. George O'Leary took over what, uh, with three games left a couple of years ago and the program really struggling they were one in ten he goes to six and five last year that's a great turnaround northwestern the only team that really turned around more than georgia tech did last year anytime you see a coach come in and turn a program around that's really struggling nine times out of ten they do it with defense they build build and rebuild their defense make that the focal point then they start getting the skill position they need to to run the offensive tack but it always starts with defense both of these coaches have done it everybody that's ever been successful turning a program around has done it with defense does carolina go after rodney williams here do they set up the return i would set up the return they've had some success with that here in the first half ray bly back at his own 48 yard line line drive punt here comes bly and down at the 37, Curtis Holloman made the stop, a punt of 35 yards. Bly brought it back eight, but now you've got a minute four to work with. They tried to set up that return. He dropped Bly off. They had a middle return formed because of the line drive. It gave him a running start, but at the same time didn't allow the wall to set. And so Georgia Tech had pretty good coverage. And this is where Georgia Tech, as you look at Dre Bly limp off the field, they can ill afford to lose him starting defensive back but this is where georgia tech really has to realize they're only down nine i mean this is still very much in this game in fact i mean less than 10 points you can't lose your concentration and try to stop carolina here before the half watch the end of this play you'll see where bly gets hit plants that left foot now here comes the hit and it hits him right above the knee into the thigh four receivers set now for north carolina first and 10 at the 37 held off with a lot of time Complete to Darren Ashford at the 30. They use their timeouts, remember that. So Keldorf hurries up his team at the line of scrimmage. Not enough for the first down, so the clock continues to move. 49 seconds left. Second and two. Complete. And out of bounds is Nay Brown, and they get the first down inside the 25 to the 24. So the good route towards the sideline, not only got the first down, but he gets out of bounds, and they have some time to plan now. Now your play calling can change, because you're already in field goal range. So you know you have the field goal, you can rely on that, but now you can take some shots at it. You can start looking at the end zone a little bit harder. And you've got Josh McGee, who is four out of four on the year, his longest of 47. The place kicker waiting on the sideline. They like seven though. First down at the 24. Up to the air is that Nay Brown in the end zone. Touchdown. How easy was that? Well, obviously, when you're in field goal range, you can start thinking about the end zone. You can take your shots into the end zone. That's what we were talking about before that play. Plus the fact Keldorf read the blitz coming from Georgia Tech. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage. Nice move by Brown Bingo. Touchdown. Well, he's made great decisions the first couple of games on where to go with the football, reading the blitz, and making the defense pay. And this time he goes to Nay Brown. And Brown with five catches for 71 yards already, including that touchdown. McGee on for the extra point.
This one straight through after hooking the last one. So it's 16 to nothing, North Carolina with the lead and just 30 seconds left here in the first half. And that, a backbreaker for George O'Leary and his troops. Getting the ball back after the stop and the quick strike for the touchdown and Brown's first career TD. All right, go ahead and let it roll. Now, Keldorf right now can go ahead and he sees the blitz coming. Now, stop it right here. Here's your linebackers. Here's Brookings. Stop the play and you'll see Brookings there on the right. All right, go ahead and let it roll now. You've already passed that, but it's one-on-one -on -one coverage down here. He is Brookings had given a stop and go move. This was predetermined. He read the blitz and just put it up in the air. A lot of air under the football to let Dave Brown run under it. Touchdown. Good read. He was thinking the same thing we were up here in the booth. It was already in field goal range. Take your shots now. Try to get into the end zone. If you can do that, fine. If you can't, you've got the field goal. Very quickly, let's go to Lewis Johnson down on the field. Lewis. Terry, thanks a lot. Listen, North Carolina quarterback Dre Bly has just been diagnosed with a left bruised kneecap. Now, doctors have checked him out. They've actually already sent him off the field. He's heading to the locker room, but they do expect him to make it back here in the second half. Guys? All right, Lewis. So, I guess good news for North Carolina and that it's nothing more serious than that. He's going to play in the second half. And across the 30 up to the 32-yard line, Chris Haney with 25 seconds left here in the half. You expect Georgia Tech just to uh, run the football off tackle a couple of times and try to regroup in the locker room. Well, and protect the ball. And George O'Leary knows that most of this was brought on by his own team. He knows that their mistakes have given North Carolina an opportunity. When you're playing a great football team or a very good football team and a well-coached football team, you can't put the ball on the ground, you can't turn it over, and you can't make penalties. Otherwise, it's like their offense is running downhill. And in a way, fortunate to be down just 16 to nothing right now. The way they've turned the ball over. Williams into the line should be the last play of the first half. North Carolina out of timeouts. They used all three on the last defensive stand to get the ball back. And a good move for Mac Brown as they were able to put seven on the board. About 15. The second half is underway here in Chapel Hill. Rodgers at his own goal line coming out. Has a seed. And across the 35 to the 37-yard line, Brian Schmitz, the kicker, made the tackle. So good field position for Georgia Tech starting their first series of the second half. They need to do better than they did on their possessions in the first half. Yeah, and this is where we give all the credit to North Carolina. But again, Georgia Tech had four penalties mixed in with all of that that took away first downs that made them punt. Also, the turnovers that led to those touchdowns. Let me tell you this, out of those four penalties, over 100 yards of all-purpose offense. They had to bring back a nice return by Harvey Middleton on a punt and a long run by Joe Hamilton. Here's C.J. Williams on first down, finding room over the left side, and he's out to the 44-yard line. Good gain of about seven to open up the second half. K. Mays in there along with Brian Simmons to stop him, and it's been tough going for C.J. Williams in the first half. Ten rushes for about three yards. That's all he's gotten in the first half. Now he's up to about ten, but he needs to be able to run a lot more than he's been able to. Well, C.J. had a tough time last weekend, too, but Charlie Rogers stepped up and had 100 yards against Wake. Chris Myers, the tight end in motion. Here goes C.J. trying the left side. Got a first down, knocked out of bounds at the 49-yard line, so they keep it on the ground. Omar Brown, the free safety was there to knock him out of bounds but one of the things that's hurt Georgia Tech Charles Wiley was banged up on that interception by Dre Bly and that return down inside the 10 he has yet to return they've got youngsters leading the way Philip Rogers another one who's a backup fullback is not playing today he's had a pinched nerve so you go all the way down to Virgil Johnson who's a freshman step back to our meeting yesterday when we were talking to the defensive coaches for North Carolina they said they were really concerned about Charles Wiley that's the one that concerned them and now he's out of the game with the injury on first down Williams on the roll looking to pass but now tucks it and runs still on his feet inside the 30 and down to the 27 yard line Timmy had two or three of those in the first half mostly right up the middle of the field this time to the outside and no flags on the ground fortunately for George O'Leary this time oh but how slick is he on that run he had three tacklers miss him on his own moves without blockers now watch this he looks downfield to pass but sees everybody's coverage now you watch his left hand he'll tell him here I come get me a block all right now watch here's a nifty move here he does that himself no blocker nifty move here did that himself 
Williams tripped up, and I think he tripped over his own feet and may have lost a couple. Williams, a junior out of West Point, Georgia, 6'1", 211 pounds. You mentioned the vertical leap earlier in the game, a vertical leap of about 40 inches. Also played for the Georgia Tech basketball team, nailing threes up the road at Reynolds Coliseum against NC State. Got a lot of playing time, too, because when Barry went out, he became a starter and was an integral part of the basketball team at Tech. Bobby Kremens was glad to have him. Now, he did pass up this past basketball season to work on football. Now, 1,900 yards and 20 touchdowns in his career as a tailback. I see there's still nine left on the play clock, but they moved, and you're gonna have motion, illegal motion against them again, or an illegal shift, probably the motion, and then move them back, so another penalty hurts them. Or was there a timeout? They called a timeout before the penalty? They did. They got the timeout. There were flags on the ground. That's what I thought. Yeah. They were all picked up? And there are no flags on the ground right now. <laughs> there is a timeout. So obviously, George O'Leary got the timeout before the penalty. The playmakers repertory. You know what I think happened? I think they called timeout and just started moving. And they threw the flag thinking that they, he had called timeout. And then the official came and said, wait a minute. That, that may have been it. So we will step away and be back second 11 when we come back. Find out who's for real and who the pretender is. Monday night, battle of 3-0 teams. Jimmy Johnson taking on the Colts. I think it's still too early to say that, but it's a pretty good matchup of unbeatens. And you remember how uh, Miami got off to that quick start last year. I think they were 5-0 uh -huh. and, oh and then fell on their, their little tushes. But I think Jimmy Johnson's changed all that. Second down and 11. Here comes Hamilton. Looking for room and up maybe to the 26-yard line. Gain of about three on the play. So that will bring up third and about eight yards. Okay, now Joe Hamilton, who made a couple critical mistakes in the first half, has to realize, all right, we're close to field goal position here now, so what we don't want to do is turn the ball over, so protect it whether we get the first or not. Third down and eight. Middleton wide left along with Conrad Daniels. Mike Sheridan to the near side. Think pass if you're defense. Daniels goes back in motion. And they're going to run it. C.J. Williams straight up the middle, finding his way close to a first down, maybe just short, though. Omar Brown on the stop, needed to get to the 18-yard line. What a great call by Pac Watson, the offensive coordinator. Knowing that Carolina's thinking that uh, it's a passing down, even though they haven't had much success with the pass. Brings up fourth and one. All right, now he reads the defense. There's very few guys in the box because they're playing pass. So Pat Watson called the run with CJ right up the middle. And I'm telling you something, that man right there made a brilliant call. Fourth down and one. Again, I'd go for it if I'm Georgia Tech. And they are. Biggest play of the second half. Maybe the game for Georgia Tech right now. Three receiver, three uh, tight ends. Myers, Bainham, and Guba. He's going to keep it right over the middle. I don't think he got it. The Carolina players saying they stopped him. We'll have to wait until they separate. I don't think he got it. Looks like he was bobbling the football, too, Tim. He didn't have a clean... He never got a good push behind no. the center page. He didn't get it. Carolina takes over on downs, and that is a huge play for Mac Brown's defense. George O'Leary can't believe that his quarterback didn't get the first down. Boy, you've got a big active offensive line. He's going to say, hey, Joe, what happened? Did you get the ball cleanly? Did you get a push? He really never did get a push. I don't think he got the ball cleanly from Craig Page as center. Page, the first-year player, is a sophomore, but he's a transfer from Louisville. Boy, that's one you'd like to see again. Leon Johnson, the lone setback now as North Carolina takes over first and 10. At their own 19-yard line, Leon straight into the line. Gets help from his friends and may have gained a couple. Boy, Mac Brown has to feel so good about his defense right now. And his offense, the way they played in the first half. Keldorf, 10 out of 20 for 108 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Leon Johnson maybe not rolling up the big yardage this year, but
but it's because the offense is designed differently and they spread it around you see the receivers what they've done nay brown five catches for 71 yards and a touchdown yeah. and it's that receiving yard that has been huge the coaches will tell you in this new offense they take what the defense gives them it's the passing game they take it it's a run like this they take that too Leon Johnson has a first down and more out to the 37 yard line after the quick pitch from Keldor a gain of 12 but he is a guy who it, it never really looks like he's blazing up the field but he's got great vision and makes good decisions where to go no but he glides he glides and looks for the hole he saw everything was in tight he got outside he would take the one-on-one -on -one with the corner any day of the week and a lot of times he'll win that battle needs eight points to become the all-time leading scorer in North Carolina history and a couple of touchdowns to lead in that category facing Mike Voigt on first down from the 37 here's Leon trying to bounce outside won't get there down at the 39 and there's a flag right at the 39 as well it'll be a hold against the heels And then all of a sudden, it's gotten very dark here at Keenan Stadium. We knew coming in, we talked about the defenses on both sides of the field, but we also knew they had quality running backs. And C.J. and uh, Leon Johnson have not really had the days that we uh, anticipated. Well, North Carolina hasn't needed Leon Johnson. All right, I'm going to give you two. First will be a GT guy that I'm going to put, you can push into a North Carolina guy. As they back up Mac Brown's offense. Leon really hasn't been needed to put up big numbers so far this year or in this game. On the flip side, though, Georgia Tech trying to establish the run really has not been able to get that going except for some big gains by Joe Hamilton, the quarterback. And they've been hurt by the turnovers and the penalties. Johnson in motion to the near side. Out of the shotgun is Keldor. Flips it out at the 30-yard line. That's caught by Chris Watson, the fullback, but not much gain, if any, there. Let's go down to Lewis Johnson. All right, Terry, let's get caught up on some injuries. On the Georgia Tech sideline, Charles Wiley, remember, he went out with that sprained left knee in the first half. Doctor said he's done for the day. It's too bad to uh, come back on the play, back, come back and play. Now, push in and look at uh, Greg Ellis, the defensive end for North Carolina. He's got a sprained right ankle. They're trying to get him taped up and get him back out there in the ballgame, guys. All right, Lewis, Ellis, an all-ACC performer a year ago, part of that defensive line that's been terrific so far this year. Second and 17, ball resting on the 30-yard line. Out of the shotgun again. Swings it out to Leon Johnson, hit at the 35 by Mike D, and what a hit. Just short of the original line of scrimmage. Another flag in the backfield. This was thrown down near Keldorf. As we wait on that, I should tell you that Monday night at 8 Eastern, Dominique Marciano and some of her solid gold Olympic teammates get together for the world's, as the world's best gymnasts come together for an hour of dazzling exhibition performances, the tour of Olympic gymnastics champions, and of course, Stan Marino and the Dolphins taking on the Colts for the lead in the AFC East, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, all Monday night right here on ABC. Terry, this is holding against North Carolina, so Georgia Tech gets the break here, and the Tar Heels now backed up all the way to about the 13-14 yard line. Now, the other thing Mac Brown didn't really worry about coming into this game, but certainly had to be aware of as you look at Keenan Stadium, the fact that Florida State awaits just a week from today, down in Tallahassee, and you know, there's no question that all fans in the ACC, when their school, you look at their schedule over the year, you look at that Florida State game and think maybe. Leon Johnson with a big game, but not nearly enough, out to the 29 after a gain of 16. Part of that new offense, let me tell you something, that what they did is they spread the field. They come out with four wide receivers, and they spread the field all the way through. So they spread the defense thin, then they run Leon Johnson up underneath, because they've spread the line back because we got them out of there by going to four wide receivers. A gain of 16, but it brings up third and 18 for the Tar Heels as Leon starting to rack up the numbers a little bit. 57 yards on the afternoon. Three receivers to the near side. Keldorf. A lot of time. Now his time is gone. Ball's on the ground. Flag's on the ground. And I believe it's going to be holding again against Carolina. He got the ball back. 
Dan Witherspoon came in to pressure Keldorf, and it is another hold against the heel. Boy, Matt Brown is just beside himself. You know, this is something that Georgia Tech did in the first half. Now his ball club's starting to do it. It's been a sloppy game, not well played because of penalties and turnovers, but watch this. I mean, again, this is where they get tied up. If you look at number 95 right there, that's Miles. There were four flags down on both sides, two on each side. Keldor fortunate to get the ball back. Georgia Tech will decline the penalty because it was a loss of nine, and it is now fourth down. In fact, it brings up fourth and 27. Derek so Carolina forced to punt. Derek DePriest, a redshirt freshman out of Homestead, Florida, on the punt. They had two punts blocked in the Syracuse game. And Harvey Middleton... So the fair catch at the zone 37, a flag at the yeah. 20, yeah. So a flag back at the North Carolina 20-yard line, and it's been a flag fest so far on this series. Legal procedure against the heels. 43-yard punt. And George O'Leary wants to take the penalty. Sure, absolutely. He says, hey, let's move him back even further. Of course, he got the fair catch, didn't get a return anyway, so he wants another shot at it. Let's move him back, make him punt again. Maybe we can get a return out of this thing. Yeah, hey, think about the job that O'Leary has done so far at Georgia Tech. Of course, today the penalty is a big part of the struggles in the first half. Four for 35 yards, but that doesn't tell the story because they had two big runs, one on a return, one on a run by... Hamilton, the quarterback, and over 100 yards that they lost. Yeah, but nobody, penalties. nobody will remember that. They'll see the Carolina spank Georgia Tech if the score stays this way. Georgia O'Leary is trying to change all that. And now DePriest just outside his own goal line. And Middleton back at his own 43-yard line. And this is a good one. they will get a return, though. Middleton back to the 34. But not much of a return. Good coverage by the Tar Heel. He's dropped at the 43 by K. Mays. 51-yard punt and 8-yard return. 16-0. 8.07 left here in the third. And Kamayu Sema Mays, outstanding linebacker for the North Carolina Tar Heels and this Tar Heel defense. Having another great day. Shutout going right now against Georgia Tech. Kavaya Sama means child of mine. And Swahili. First down at the 43. C.J. Williams burst through on the left side of the line. Gain maybe three or four. Marcus Dow, the sophomore out of Thomasville, North Carolina. In on the stop. Brother, still trying to establish that running game. They've had some success, but... Nothing in the air, Timmy, at all. No, and Tech has been able to show a lot of formations, a lot of motion at times, and uh, they've been able to protect Hamilton for the most part. But the running game has been successful. They have not been able to throw it all, and they need some of that, obviously, yeah, because they still have no points on the board. Two and a half yards per play, though, is uh, not going to get it done. Play action on the roll is Hamilton. Under throws is intended receiver. That was Middleton. And that pass wasn't even close. No. Nope. He's 0 for 5 now, throwing the ball. That one wasn't even close. Yeah, obviously, he doesn't have any confidence in, in what he's doing in the passing game right now. And here's a guy who came in to this game, 26 out of 33. So that's a completion rate of 79%. That's second best in the ACC. It's obviously not going to continue today. But well, we talked to the coaches the other day, though. They said, this is a different test for your young quarterback. This is a defense that is as quick as any you're going to find and could possibly match up. You know, with a Florida State quickness-wise on defense. In the air and almost caught, but incomplete. Conrad Daniels, the man who came back for the football, had it and then couldn't hold on. Now, that ball could have been caught. George O'Leary very high on Conrad Daniels, likes the way he plays. But again, Hamilton had pressure coming. He had to throw the ball probably before he was ready. Now you look at the bottom of your screen, you see number six. Now watch, he makes a great adjustment on the ball inside the defender, and the ball's right there. You know, he's got it should have been caught. He's got to make that catch. Got to catch that ball. Rodney Williams out for another punt. Dre Bly is back deep for the heel. One's going to bounce out of bounds just outside the 20-yard line. 
a 33-yard punt. But again, a frustrating offensive series for Georgia Tech. Now, we mentioned it was getting darker a couple of minutes ago, as you see some of the scores from other games, and it has started to rain, and actually rain pretty heavily right now. It's sending the crowd uh, for cover, or at least the rain jackets. And I know Lewis Johnson brought his, so he'll be fine down on the sidelines. Well, the rain won't affect Georgia Tech's passing game. <laughs> you got a point. First down at the 21. Keldor, straight drop, a lot of time. What a catch by Johnson. Wrapped up at the 27, a gain of about six, but he one-handed that you know, in Keldorf, the rain. Keldor, when he threw the touchdown pass to Jones, and he threw that pass to Leon Johnson both times he threw it high put a lot of air under it and made it very soft now watch this it just kind of just lobs it out there and it comes down so softly both those catches were with one hand it's like they just cradle it in the palm and bring it in very soft touch by Keldrick and Leon Johnson 54 catches a year ago that was a North Carolina record here he comes trying to run this time across the 30 up to the 32 close to a first down he may have it and to get back to Chris Keldor, and we mentioned earlier the patience that that guy has had throughout his career, waiting his chance, going to a couple of different junior colleges after Utah State. And the numbers on Leon Johnson, 61 yards on the ground, 22 in the air. But Keldor, a guy from Manhattan Beach, California, but certainly not a California beach bum. Here's a guy who had to work hard for everything that he's got in his life. Didn't have his license, didn't drive until he was 18 years old, and uh, in fact, didn't have his first car until he arrived here on the Carolina campus. First time he came on the campus and ran into offensive coordinator Greg Davis. He says, how much do you weigh, son? He said, 260 pounds. He says, hey, next time I see you, either lie or lose some weight. But don't tell me you weigh 260 <laughs> pounds. Well, first down for the Heels. They lead it 16 to nothing with 622 and counting here in the third quarter. Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt, and Lewis Johnson at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. A pair of unbeatens in the ACC, both 2-0 going at it. But North Carolina has really had their way throughout this entire game and penalties and turnovers have killed Georgia Tech. This one tip almost picked off, but a nice play by Nate Perryman too to keep it away from the intended receiver, Nate Brown. Did do a nice job, but then he acted like, hey, hey, I didn't touch him, I didn't hit him before the ball. He can hit him before the ball. Once that ball is tipped, it's up for grabs. There can be all the contact you want. You can get to that ball. Now watch, the ball gets tipped at the line of scrimmage. Now here comes Perriman, 32, tries to get up there, and now watch, he goes, hey, I didn't touch him, I didn't touch him, I'm clean, but it doesn't make any difference. Not because sure. Once it's tipped, yeah, everybody's fair game. Not sure if Perriman saw it being tipped, though, of course, he's in coverage, so... Better safe than uh, getting called for the interference. Second and ten, Keldor. Deep drops on the set up the screen. Leon Johnson has it. Trip. Gets across the 40 to the 41. Keith Brooking helped him go to the turf, and he's just short of a first down. Got injured at the end of that play. Looked like he got stepped on, but not enough for the first down but it sets up third down and short so he certainly did his job what a well-designed play this is and again it shows you the versatility of this offense go ahead and you'll see the Keldor sets now rolls the screen is ready to go they let him come through now look at the blockers in front see now he stumbles a little bit now he gets stepped on right there at the end of the play and that that shook him up a little bit well you'd hate to see him get hurt like that at the mm. end of a play The way they're holding it almost looks like he had a cramp. Uh, it is not hot in Chapel Hill this afternoon. As you can tell, it started to rain a couple of moments ago. Two weeks ago in the Carrier Dome. Actually, uh, a place that has no air conditioning. A number of players started to cramp. The heat was really something that both teams had to contend with. And now the rain is really coming down. Third and two at the 40-yard line. Maurice McGregor fighting his way. I don't think he got there. Stopped just outside of the 40-yard line. Keith Brooking just popped him. It's going to bring up fourth down and short. I'll tell you what, Rodgers and Brooking are about as active as you can find linebackers. We've been watching both sets because Carolina certainly has a, a group of linebackers as good as any. But watch these guys. 
Now they know it's third and short. Boom, watch the middle. 50, rookie. Bam, right there. Takes him on, tucks the tail, gets his head right in the chest, the numbers, and doesn't allow him to cross the chains. Uh, Rodgers knew exactly where those markers were and put him back, and that's what he had to do. Great play, played him inside out, never lost his leverage. Outstanding play by Ron Rodgers, the heart and soul of the defense at linebacker. That's why he's all conference. So to Priest down for another punt. Perryman is back at his own 20-yard line. Delay a game, that'll move him back a little bit more. It's been an uninspired second half so far, hasn't it? it really has. I mean, and it's gotten so quiet here in the stadium. Partially, I guess, because of the rain and so many people went for cover. Well, the game started is well, a little bit overcast, but the sun was out for most of the first half. This one on the ground. Nice play by DePriest to get this off. And they put Middleton back there now in place of Perryman. Forget about it. He lost a couple, knocked back to the 18-yard line. The Heels think they have the football, and they do. North Carolina recovers the fumble from Harvey Middleton, and he can't believe it. He thought he was down before he let that ball go. Deion Dyer made the recovery. that yesterday talking to the coaches we said who should we look for on special teams and they said Dion Dyer well watch this now Middleton said he was down before the ball was taken away we'll see if it was all right he's taking the ball I agree with Middleton. he was down I think Middleton's butt was on the ground when he took that ball away he should not have said that's a turnover that should still be Georgia Tech football but Carolina takes over at the 18 yard line they get a break and still a great play by Dyer because he got the call and he was there to make the hit Keldorf to throw. A lot of time over the middle, and it looked like a lot of contact there. The intended receiver, Freddie Jones, and no flag. Ron Rogers on the coverage, and it looked like he came over the back of Freddie Jones. Jones shaking his head. He can't believe it. Take a look at this fumble again. See if he's on the ground. Now, first of all, his knee's down there, and the ball is still not loose. Now, he'll reach down and take it there. Boy, I tell you, that's a close call. I'm not sure that I would... I'm not sure that I would have uh, said turnover. You know what, though? Great acting job by Dyer. Oh, it was a terrific play by Dyer. You stand up and you act like you recovered the fumble. Here's Watson bouncing off of people, fights his way inside to the 12-yard line. I don't care what happens today. You cannot take credit away from North Carolina. Georgia Tech may help them, but certainly that, uh, that doesn't detract from the performance of the Tar Heels today. Well, one of the reasons they've turned the ball over, not on that play perhaps, but the pressure defensively from North Carolina stopping the passing game entirely so that Georgia Tech has one option, and that's running the football. And they have been fairly successful at that, but nothing in terms of getting inside the 20 and actually taking advantage of opportunities. Maurice McGregor now in the backfield along with Watson. Nate Brown in motion to the far side. A lot of time for Keldorf again to the end zone. Jones is there, but incomplete. Chris Watson as well in the corner of the end zone, but he was trying to hit his big tight end for the second time today in the end zone. There's no question, Mac Brown has himself a football team. Mac Brown has these kids winning in every way possible, whether it's dominating with the running game or coming in and playing with the defense or winning because Georgia Tech's giving you some opportunities. Bottom line is, Mac Brown has his team win in a lot of different ways. They're the real deal now. They should be ranked as high as they are. It's going to be interesting to watch what happens next week against Florida State. So a 29-yard attempt for Josh McGee. He's 4-for-4 four four this year. 4-for-4, four four, had a couple of field goals against Syracuse in the big win a couple of weeks ago. In the rain, this one is through the uprights. So McGee, perfect on the year. There is a flag down at the 13-yard line. We'll see who they talk to. And they're talking to Georgia Tech. It's got to be against the heels. Something you don't see very often, a legal formation on a field goal try. And Mac can't understand it either. So 
what was fourth and four. And a 29-yard field goal by Josh McGee now becomes fourth and nine, and it becomes a 34-yard field goal try, his longest of the year, 47 yards. blocked at the line of scrimmage. It looked like Brooking may have got his hand up there to block it. Boy, what a big penalty that was because not only is it take three off, but it's depending on what this flag is and there is another flag down. Luigi Tech comes Freaking up with a block. Like yeah, now the flag came down right before the snap actually. Big break for Georgia Tech. They created it, but uh, Mac Brown's going to go back to the drawing board and practice this week and figure out how they can line up on field goal attempts. Hey, are you impressed with Brookie? Oh. You know, last year it was Ron Rogers who was the All-ACC guy. Keith Brookie, they said, probably should have been All-ACC. And in this game, he looks like he's All-World. Ten left in the third quarter in North Carolina. Hanging on to that 16-0 lead. That's what it was at the half. And Mac Brown upset about the second half, I'm sure. And, and right now upset with officials in terms of the illegal formation calls against his offense on the field goal tries. But to me, they had a number of penalties as well on the drive before that. In fact, three holding penalties on one series. And they have not played all that well here in the second half. Boy, Max, not a, he's not happy. See, they explained what the penalty was, and he thinks that they made a mistake talking about the, the penalty. Bottom line is, Brookie made a great play. This is what Max talking about. He's got his two back men, and they're set back off the line. What the officials are saying that these guys have to be closer up here and that they don't have enough guys up there. Well, that's wrong. And and Max White. If indeed that's what the officials talking about. Right. And uh, that's what Max trying to figure out right now and obviously doesn't agree with whatever the official has in mind because it happened twice on consecutive field goal tries. And it looks like the rain has let up a little bit. So it's first and 10 at the 20 yard line. We'll see if Georgia Tech maybe can use this and turn it into a little momentum. They're in dire need of it. Haven't been able to get anything going offensively at all. CJ Williams trying the right side of the ball on the ground. Georgia Tech gets it back though at the 25 yard line and very quickly let's go up to New York and check in again with John Saunders. John, what do you got for us? Well, Terry, we have a monsoon in Ann Arbor. Boston College in Michigan. Amari Walker, though not affected, walking between the raindrops all the way to the end zone. 20 yards, 14 to 7. Right now, Michigan has an interception, however. Terry. John, go figure college football, huh? The big win in the, in the big game against Colorado. Another down to touchdown to BC. Second and five, Myers in motion. Off the play action, here's Hamilton. Goes for Daniels, and incomplete. Almost picked off at the end by Dre Bly. The coverage by Greg Williams, but Bly was there as well, and he almost had his second interception of the day. I'm wondering if the rain is starting to affect the ball now, because that's another pass that should have been caught. Hamilton stepped up, threw it well, and I want you to watch the end of it. Okay, here's, here's the pass. He goes up, and there's good coverage, but again, it hits the hands of Conrad Daniels, and he's got to come down with that. But again, you're right, that's outstanding coverage by Williams. This is a secondary for North Carolina that is awfully good. And, well, last year it only had eight interceptions. They had three already coming into this game. Got another one here. And Joe Hamilton 0 for 7 on the afternoon passing. Going for number 8 here. C.J. Williams, he completes this one. Williams has got room and he's got speed. Across midfield to the 49. So the first complete pass of the afternoon for Joe Hamilton. 
and a 26-yard gain as C.J. Williams takes it across midfield. C.J.'s ran a little high percentage route here. Watch, gives him a little out like he's stopping and comes back across the middle. He's more of a safety valve than anything else. Looked for a rub off and couldn't get it. But then once he got into the open field, he's looking for blockers. Harvey Middleton never did get a block. Had to chase his man, didn't want to risk a clip. Great play by C.J., though, to get up the midfield. C.J. over the left side, not much room at all there. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Brian Simmons, the junior out of New Bern, North Carolina. The outstanding linebacker met him. Simmons may be the best athlete on that defense, certainly among the linebackers. You know, Georgia Tech's got to show a sense of urgency here. They've got to start picking up the pace a little bit. Time's starting to run out on them. They've got under a minute and a half to go in this quarter. Then they'll be faced with the fourth quarter. But they've got to really start to pick up the pace, get crisp in and out of the huddle, try to get as many plays in as they possibly can. Second down and a long count this time. Williams not going anywhere. Mike Henley met him as soon as he took the handoff from Hamilton. Bringley had a couple of sacks two weeks ago against Syracuse. This time wraps up Williams deep in the backfield. His play seemed to take forever to develop. And then the handoff was deep in the backfield. So I'm not sure, you know, what they saw that they were trying to get. But watch coming out of the left hand of your screen. Here goes number 91 to make the play. And big old Mike Pringley, who was everything in high school, heavily recruited, fine player, comes up with his third sack of the year. They lost six on that, so it brings up Excellent. third. Not a sack, but a big play in the backfield. Third and 16, Hamilton's got to throw now. The jump pass, he put it up to grabs, and Bly with the interception. Dre Bly, all he had to do was leap and catch that one. An ill-advised pass from Joel Hamilton, who was under pressure again. Interception by North Carolina, and they take over at their own 32-yard line. Number 11, North Carolina leading 16 to nothing over Georgia Tech. They take over after the interception by Dre Bly, second of the day. First to 10 at the 32. Leon Johnson looking for room, squirts back to the line of scrimmage, maybe. Good containment by the Yellow Jackets. Keep Brooking on the tackle. Well, next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central on ABC Sports. UCLA taking on the Michigan Wolverines up in Ann Arbor. Michigan ranked number eight. Carolina travels to Ta Tallahassee to take on Florida State. Penn State and Wisconsin. And Texas A&M struggling, but they take on Colorado. That's next Saturday. Check with your local cable operator. The game's available on pay-per-view as well. The end of the third quarter on a rainy turf here in Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill and the Tar Heels with the 16-0 lead on Georgia Tech will be back after this word from our ABC stations Carolina leading 16 to nothing and coming up to the line on second and 11 at the 31 yard line they have been brilliant on defense the shutout going and offensively have really gotten what they wanted to go as well on the roll is Chris Keldor swings it out complete up to his tight end at the 38 yard line that's Freddie Jones Terry it's almost as if the offense now knows what Georgia Tech defense is doing it was Rodgers who came on the blitz on the right side, so he rolled and came around to the defense left and just hit the pass in the flats. Boy, if you look at this, I think the big story is the turnovers. You know, Carolina finished 105th out of 108 turnover margin last year. Only had 34 for the entire year. Came into this game plus three. They've got four more now, plus seven for the year. Georgia Tech has held onto the football longer than North Carolina. Just haven't been able to do anything with it. Keldor, under pressure, he goes down. Somebody missed an assignment. Ralph Hughes came uncovered, nobody saw him, so he came free. That's an easy sack, good sack, good positioning of the Georgia Tech defense by Dave Huxtable, and Hughes never was touched. Hughes, a three-year starter and a junior out of Montgomery, Alabama, so it brings up fourth down at the 32. 
And as much as North Carolina has now dominated this game, if you look at Derek DePriest, how to be playing for Dean Smith, too. He's six feet eight inches tall. He had two blocked against Syracuse, though. They have to be conscious of that. Oh, boy. This one a good one, though. Middleton back inside his 20. Solid return out to the 38-yard line. So 49-yard punt and a 19-yard return by Middleton. Georgia Tech takes over. One touchdown in 14 quarters. They shut out Clemson 45 to nothing, defeated Syracuse 27 to 10, and of course they got the shutout going this afternoon too. to nothing and even though we're in the fourth quarter Tim, you get the sense that Carolina now as you look at the game has dominated play because Georgia Tech has never threatened but now it's only a 16 point game at this point Charlie Rogers with the run bouncing outside and out of bounds at the 44 yard line and I'll take you up to John Saunders John Terry Michigan trailing Boston College at home third and ten Scott Dreisbach goes to the corner here ties streets leaps comes up with a grab and from a yard out, that sets up Dreisbach for the quarterback keeper. It's tied at 14 apiece. Terry. All right, John. Second and five for Georgia Tech. As they come to the line of scrimmage. Virgil Johnson in there at fullback. The play action. Hamilton chased out of the pocket. Going across his body. This is complete to Middleton. Inside the 40, down to the 34-yard line. So a big gain, but a dangerous pass by Hamilton. What a great adjustment by Middleton. Middleton saw he was in trouble and came back to the passer. And by running back seven yards, he was able to get to the open area and make the catch. Hamilton was going to try to force it in there, but Middleton adjusted his route, and that's what made that thing go. Gain of 22, Harvey Middleton on the receiving end of that catch. So that pass, Middleton, a high school teammate for a year with Joe Hamilton. And Macedonia High School. And they played football together since they were kids. Since Joe Hamilton was about six years old. Here comes Rogers. Away from one tackler. Still up. And finally goes down. But Mike Pringley got him. But uh, he bounced off a couple of guys before he went down to the ground. Pringley's so big. Jumped on his back. He had no shot. Rogers only 5'10, about 180 pounds. But a strong kid. Williams comes back into the ball game, but they leave Charlie Rogers in as well. So you've got the two backs that take out a tight end Myers. You've got Middleton and Mike Sheridan to the near side. Split Williams to the top of your screen. And Rogers the one back on second and eleven. Straight drop. Flags down, so is Hamilton. They've bothered him all afternoon. Pringley was there first. This will be holding against Georgia Tech. George O'Leary is just beside himself. He is so frustrated right now. I'm telling you what. And the other guy that's frustrated is Hamilton. I mean, every time he looks up, there's a blue jersey coming at him from some side or another. And as much as he tries to stay loose and stay out of everybody's way, it's just an impossibility. Look at that. George just shaking his head. He said, this is unbelievable. Took over for Bill Lewis. What a job he's done. Took a 1-10 to team. Back to 6-5 and five last year. I mean, they beat Maryland. They beat Carolina last year. They almost got Arizona and Georgia. Lost to them right at the end of the game or they would have been in a bowl. He's got a young quarterback this, this year, though. A redshirt freshman in Joe Hamilton. And you talk about making decisions at the line of scrimmage, changing plays when you read the blitz, trying to call off to a different play. That's awfully tough. It is awfully tough. But it takes maturation process. It takes uh, the experience. His overall athleticism, I think, reminds a lot of people of Sean Jones, who was here. The major, uh, he was tremendously successful in, uh, in his career. Probably the most successful in school history. And they think that that's what Hamilton's going to do. They operate out of the eye now. Daniels goes in motion on second and 28. And this is where it's been dangerous. But Hamilton's going to run this time. Not very far, though. Dropped after a gain of about one. Rick Terry 
Oh. Had him wrapped up first, and then he got popped. Oh, what a pop by James Hamilton, too. I mean, he just pancaked him. Well, tomorrow night on ABC, it's Premiere Sunday, an hour of all-new videos on the season premiere of America's Funniest Home Videos, followed by the season premiere of Lois and Clark. Then Valerie Bertinelli and Vanessa Redgrave star in the world premiere movie event, Two Mothers for Zachary, tomorrow night on ABC. Third and a whole bunch, 27. This is where Hamilton's gotten in trouble all afternoon. And here they come. Rushed out of the pocket, throws back across, and this one's picked off. Dre Bly with his third. And now he drops it. The Heels get it back at the 40-yard line, the third of the afternoon, and that's another ball that should have been caught. And they've all been third and long. Third and long that time, he threw an interception, third and 22. Third and 16, he threw an interception. It's always the same thing. It's a passing down. The defense knows it's a passing down, and Hamilton has not thrown a good pass. Now, this one was well thrown, and it should have been caught. CJ can't hang on to it, and this is just a tip drill. And Dre Blyfrey, so watch this. Blyfrey starts to run, ball's wet, he just drops. <laughs> All of a sudden, there's Robert Williams says, hey, I've got a shot at this thing, and he picks it up. Not a bad afternoon for Dre Bly, though. No, and CJ should have made that catch, but I mean, it's third and long all afternoon. It's gotten Hamilton in trouble. So first down for the heels, Leon Johnson tripped up by Mike D at the 46-yard line. Maybe got to the 47, but uh, this is the whole story, folks. That and uh, penalties. Isn't that the truth? And again, I, I can't reiterate the point that that was the big nemesis against Carolina last year. They couldn't get any turnovers. I mean, they were almost last in the country out of 108 schools. They're 105. They only had 34 all year. Now they've got five in this game and came into the game in a plus three situation. Well, coming into the game, they had turned the ball over twice last year. They had nine at this point in the season. Leon wrapped up by Keith Brooking, and we step away to check in with John Saunders again. Terry, Arizona against Washington. Arizona's offense is ruled, and now their defense. Keith Smith back to pass. Little wounded duck up in the middle of the air, and Tony Parrish picks it off. Nice move there to the right, to the left, and then down the sidelines. No one can catch him. 45 yards, 31 to 10. Meanwhile, Florida and Tennessee, right now it's just all Gators, 35-9. Over 100,000 in uh, Knoxville going home very unhappy. Probably very quiet right now. Uh-huh. Kelvin uh, under pressure, uh, throws it away. Good decision. Yeah, how about that? 35-9. to nine. And got him on a, in a hurry. I mean, it wasn't even something they'd been working up to. They had a huge lead early on. Just jumped on them as soon as they came into the stadium. Ralph Hughes all over Chris Keldor, chasing him, forcing him to throw that ball away. Hughes has played well. He has been in the backfield a number of times, had the sack uh, on the last set of downs. And there's contact. Here comes the flag. Fair catch by Middleton, but they roughed him. Roughing the kicker back at the 35-yard line. He's a big target. If you don't get the ball, you're gonna get, you're gonna get the six nine, the priest. Not a whole lot of contact there, but it is in the rule book. The defensive guy's obligation to avoid the kicker. So that'll be running into and not roughing. Should be five instead of five yards. Yep. Running, running the kicker on the defense. No automatic first down. Declined. First down. So the distinction between roughing and running into the key for Georgia Tech. And they will take over at the row 14-yard line. 38 yard punt by Derek 16 nothing. The Tar Heels on top. College football and ABC Sports brought to you by Plymouth. One clever idea after another. That's Plymouth. Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you, fresh beer tastes better. And Circuit City, the choice for price, selection, and service. 
you know, look at the bell tower there and the tall pine trees that surround Keenan Stadium, built in 1927, a number of improvements. And in that end zone there, you see all the red clay. They are building a whole structure, football offices, and uh, be ready next year. Gorgeous setting here, though. Hamilton to throw through the hands of his tight end, Grant Bainham, but he was well covered by Brian Simmons. You know, the situation for Georgia Tech now, even if Tech started to play well like they have in the first two games, now the clock is a major factor. 9.07. It's not so much Carolina as it is the clock right now. They're down 16 with only nine minutes left. They have to really play with a sense of urgency. I mean, if you, if you see what they've done in the previous games, obviously, you know, they, are, they have that ability. They can do a lot. I mean, their rushing and passing game has been solid until today. Only 9.07 left in this one, though, and they're facing toughest defense that they've faced so far this year. Play action, Hamilton on the row. He's got a lot of room to run. And run out of bounds, maybe just short of the first down. Now at the 24-yard line. Here's Carl Torbush, the defensive coordinator for North Carolina. What a job he has done assembling this defense. Yeah, in his ninth year here, he knows uh, Mac Brown inside and out. They know each other. They work so well together. They've got the type of athlete they want, the big, strong, fast guys. The NFL type linemen and the fast, fast secondary guys. He's done a marvelous job here putting his defense together. Here's his reaction at last play. See, he's he's intent. He's watching this game, and besides that, he knows every restaurant in Chapel Hill. He knows his Southern barbecue. Well, I gotta does tell he you. ever? He put us on the bullocks last night, and we put the feedback on. C.J. Williams right at the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure he got there. He may have just gotten across and enough for the first down, and he did. You love a defensive guy who knows his football and knows his restaurant. See, they go hand in hand. You got to keep your players well fed. You got to keep them going to the right places. What did we gain about 12 pounds last night? Yeah, no question about it. Not hard to find good barbecue in uh, this part of the country. In fact, this part of North Carolina. This is complete to Mike Sheridan across the 35 out to the 37 yard line. He may have a first down. For yeah. Georgia Tech. And the thing is, they've got to get going here. They've got to get up to the hurry-up scheme. They've got to start playing with more. Say, look, we're still not even in the huddle yet. 3.30 Eastern and 2.30 Central next Saturday. UCLA, Michigan. Carolina taking on Florida State. Penn State of Wisconsin and Colorado. Texas A&M, a good lineup. Check your local listings for the game in your area and your cable operator for the game available on pay-per-view. A little swing pass out to Williams. Dances around one man. Out to the 40-yard line. Nice move by C.J. Williams to get outside. Doesn't get out of bounds, though. The clock continues to move. Last time, they did do a nice job with the clock stopped to move the chains to get ready as soon as they put it back in play. Gain of about five, so it brings up second and five for George O'Leary's crew. He's a competitor, isn't he? Boy, you got to like George O'Leary. He's done a good job in the... You know, the feisty Irishman is, he's a competitor. He wants to compete. He's, he's still upset. Wants his guys to get going, get some points on the board here. Carolina loading up defensively again. Now they back off Hamilton to throw. Maybe. Maybe not. Down he goes again. Third sack of the afternoon. And he's been pressured all day long, this time by Bonnie Holiday. Well, and the key to that is that Holiday and Terry, Ellis and Pringley, along with Davis, those guys have gotten the push up front. They've allowed their linebackers to get in their seams, get in the creases, and then the secondary has done a very nice job in their coverages. Holiday, only a junior. In fact, there are only two seniors that start on this North Carolina defense, Rick Terry and James Hamilton. So they have most of the defense back again next year. Big third down and six coming up here from the 39. Straight drop for Hamilton. They may drop him. The fourth sack of the afternoon. Tito Simpson got him around the eggs, legs, and uh, Russell Davis got him up top. Then a big sack for the Tar Heels. And let's go up to John Saunders very quickly. Terry Boston College in Michigan. Scott drives back trying to break the tie. Watch the wide-open Jeremy Tooman, who had the game-winning catch against Colorado. He turns around, looks surprised. No one's there, and takes it in. They miss the point after. 58 yards, though, on the play. Terry. All right, John Rodney Williams, the pump for Georgia Tech here. This is a good one. Why? 
Fair catch at his own 24-yard line. A punt of 42 yards, and North Carolina takes over with 6.16 left in the game. They're in for a good year in Chapel Hill. 16-0, they lead Georgia Tech this afternoon, trying to move to 3-0, and... and you look at what they've been able to do and uh, how little Georgia Tech has been able to accomplish. Carolina working all week. They talked about 281 yards. That's what they gave up last year to Tech. They 281, 281, and we've coasted all over the place. You see what they've done today. They've held Tech and held them way under the 281 they gave up last year. And up the middle. Still up. Has a first down out to the 38-yard line. Deceptive speed and a lot of power in that back. 6'1", 210 pounds out of Morganton, North Carolina. Came into this game needing just 90-some yards to become UNC's all-time scoring leader. Nine points, rather, to become UNC's all-time scoring leader. And uh, I tell you, he's such an outstanding player. He's got that excellent quickness, but he, he doesn't have the, the great breakaway speed. But you put him in a closet, and you can't get a hold of him, can't touch him. First and 10, a gain of about three for Johnson that time. I talked to Mac Brown yesterday about his approach to this season and how it differs from years past. There is a very big difference. College football is precious. Don't look past a play. Do not look past a ball game. Have some fun. Enjoy yourself because it can be taken away from you a lot sooner than you think. Most of these guys will not play in the NFL. So why not enjoy it? So let's don't look down the road. Let's be the best we can be today. And then when this thing's over, let's look back and see what type memories we have. But the only thing that we've asked this football team is let's win every game that we have a chance to win. Mac Brown, I mean, the guy's vibrant. He's energetic. He's innovative. Now in his ninth year, and uh, he's done a terrific job here. And right now he's upset. The penalty against North Carolina, the personal foul, and it brings him back first and 25 now in the 23. But in talking to Mac yesterday, he said in years past, like most coaches, uh, just a natural thing, he'd look at the schedule, and coaches go up and down the, the schedule and pick out games they should win and games that will be tough to win and games that they're big underdogs in. And you try to figure out what games you need to get, the, the key game. He said, you know, I've seen so many crazy things happen in college football the last few years. I don't even want to do that anymore. I just want to take it Saturday by Saturday and enjoy each and every game. Yeah, and uh, what a great great outlook to have. And and he seems to be doing that, and he seems to be so much looser than, than he was in his younger years on game day and prior to game day. Big hole for Leon Johnson, bouncing out to the 32. Mike D made the initial stop, and then the flags come in. Maybe a late hit. Well, he got a great block by Brian Honeycutt, the right guard at the line of scrimmage. And this time they're going to walk it off against Georgia Tech. So personal foul against Carolina, then Georgia Tech. Well, again, you know, here's your guy. You know Johnson's going to get his opportunities here in an effort to melt the clock. But it's somehow he gets through the linebackers. Now, here come all the late hits. Well, I'm not sure about that, though. I mean, did they call it on the late hit? I'm not sure they called it on Roberts, 54, and, and it didn't look that late to me. And George O'Leary is upset about it. That's what they call. George doesn't agree on that sideline. Well, I'm not sure I do either. Johnson again gets the call, and they're just wearing down the defense of Georgia Tech now. And Leon running free down to the 37-yard line. You know, we've given Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, a lot of credit for what's taking place at North Carolina offensively. And I thought it was uh, it, it was almost funny. We went in, we talked to Mac Brown yesterday, and he says, well, I think the changes are all perception. People, you know, don't understand. We really haven't changed that much. But the bottom line is you do see a lot more one-back sets. There's a lot more versatility out of the Tar Heels this year under Greg Davis. There he is up there on the, on the left side. And, and Greg, I think, has done a marvelous job in talking to Gil Brandt, too. He thinks it's such a happy marriage between Mac Brown and Greg Davis. I mean, you can see it on the field and what it's done for the Tar Heels. Leon Johnson may have fought his way ahead for a yard. He went over 100 yards in the day on the previous carry. Derek, Derek Shepard was there to meet him at the line of scrimmage, but that clock continues Justin to run. Robertson. 433 and counting. Well, Timmy, this, not, this one not over, but certainly Carolina with this 
game in hand. It's theirs to lose right now. You look ahead to next week and the matchup with Florida State. Saw what they did to North Carolina State on the road the other night, and uh, they're as impressive as they've ever been. Maybe the best team in the country. Yeah, but you know, last year they were as well. Rated very highly, and they've won more games than anybody in the 90s, so it's not like they're just beating up the teams in the ACC. I mean, and their record against SEC teams is, is no different. So, uh, you know, that could be a misconception there as well. And I think the league is getting a lot closer. And when you look at Virginia last year, beat them. I mean, they are beatable, and I think that takes the lid off. But the bottom line is they do have more talent, more depth than anybody else. Johnson runs for about five, but there's a flag on the play, and it looks like this one will come back. Well, I think when Georgia or uh, Virginia beat them last year, I think, number one, it was, it was a great thing for the ACC overall because everyone wondered if they would ever be beaten in the league, and I think it gives the league even more credibility. I think their being in the ACC has helped other teams recruit, not only in the state of Florida, but throughout the southeast and the nation. And I do think that North Carolina, the North Carolinas and the Virginias and some of the other clubs in the ACC have gotten better because they're in the league. Not just perception-wise or the way the league is looked at, but they have gotten better. And I think North Carolina is at a point, it's going to be awfully tough to go to Tallahassee and beat up on the Seminoles, but uh, I think they're at a point where they can definitely play well. It's been a great merger for the league and for Florida State because the football program has risen throughout the league to meet where they are, and the basketball situation I think Florida State's basketball program has risen to meet where the ACC was in basketball they went bad that first year as well but I think you're right came in beat the heels right here in North Carolina the first game don't forget if time permits stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report featuring scores and highlights from across the country if time permits after the game Three seventeen left, and the heels wrapping this one up. Car heels rolling this afternoon, sixteen nothing, and much of that due to their quarterback and what he's done on the year, Timmy Chris Keldor. And certainly one of the biggest question marks coming into this year about the quarterback situation. I mean, everybody knows that quarterback Mike Thomas is gone. You know, ran out of eligibility, and he set the single-season passing record last year, although he had 19 interceptions. But Keldorf comes in from junior college. Davenport's coming off knee surgery, so they didn't know what the situation was going to be. But Keldorf has stepped in and now has the Tar Heels about to go 3-0. and And Davenport and Keldorf are really even in many ways in practice, but the coaches said the injury to Davenport and what Keldorf is able to do throwing the football, the difference. And here he goes to Leon Johnson for about five, up to the 40 yard line down to the 40 of Georgia Tech and he's 6'5 250 plus when you've got a guy standing in the pocket that can look over the line at 6'5 like that and has as much poise and confidence as he's shown in the first three games and that's really a big plus but he's overcome a lot of obstacles and the odds getting to where he is right now out on the field 306 left to play just looks like a guy that's put in a long day you know and he's in charge and he's looking at the situation and talking with the coach and say all right we got 306 left and he says we're up by 16 points interesting i mean he's so mature about everything he does he just looks like he's in control but a defensive battle north carolina able to do a lot on offense as well in the first half at least some of the sights and sounds of this battle in chapel hill today see that catch by Freddie Jones I'm amazed yeah, that one, one hand, catch, isn't it? just stuck to his hand fourth and 12 on the 40 so Carolina gonna punt where they come and Georgia Tech doesn't get there no one back deep either sails into the end zone they'll bring it out to the 20 well they were taking a shot 259 left and it looks like North Carolina 
going to get a little revenge. 27-25, they dropped a heartbreaker a year ago. Watching Derek DePriest come off the field, he's just shaking his head. He had two block last week, and then tried to pooch this one, get a little air under it, put it inside the 10, but he couldn't do it. You know, UNC finished last in the ACC last year in punting, and DePriest has done pretty well. It's we have a new quarterback as uh, Shaw comes into the ball game. Brandon Shaw, sophomore out of Marietta, Georgia. And another quarterback battle in practice between Shaw and Hamilton. Hamilton got the nod, but this is a good-looking young kid. He's the better passer. Throws incomplete on first down. Not to C.J. Williams, underthrew him a little bit. Well, you know, you, you look at what North Carolina did last year and they finished seven and five but this year five of the first six opponents to teams that defeated them a year ago and now with this win hanging on here with 253 left they will have defeated three teams that they lost to a year ago well you have to believe they're going to be throwing a lot here at Georgia Tech and it's watching what happened today and they Middleton to catch up at the 36 and he's popped Watching what, what happened here today with the total failure of the passing game for Georgia Tech, you know, you have to think back and say, well, that was one of the weaknesses of this team coming in. I mean, they finished last in the ACC in pass offense last year, 94th in the nation, and then they came in here, and when they needed it, they couldn't go to it. That was Keith Newman, number nine, who just popped Harvey Middleton over the middle. Shaw, he gets hit as well, but complete out to C.J. Williams at midfield. And he was under pressure, too. Those are two fine passes, those last two. Marcus Dow was right in his face. He's up directing traffic. Got a strong arm. Sean's father, an assistant coach on the collegiate level at Florida State, Tennessee, Tulane. On the run. Throwing it incomplete. Middleton, the intended receiver, and he was open for a minute. Well, I'll tell you, that's impressive, though. Shaw showed some mobility, and then on the run, threw it about 45 yards, and I mean, threw it hard. He's got a, he's got a pretty good arm. He's got a heck of an arm. Boy, he won the NC State game last year when, when Davis got hurt. He came into the ball game. He's definitely, according to the passers, the better, or the coaches, rather, the better passer of the two. And he's a good-sized quarterback, 6'3", 219 pounds. And he's young. He's a redshirt sophomore. Second and ten, Shaw out of the shotgun now. Under pressure. Again on the run. A familiar sight. And throws it away. No one there. Well, that one just slipped out of his hand. You know, you're playing with a wet football. It's still raining. Where he threw the last one, 45 on a rope. This time, this ball just slipped out of his hand. with maybe 15. North Carolina is going to, going to go to 3-0 as they head down to Florida State, and this is a huge win for this program. This is a team, as you mentioned, that beat them last year and physically beat them. 3-0 <laughs> overall, 2-0 in the ACC. First road win over a top-10 club since 1966, two weeks ago at Syracuse. Started the season unranked, and now should move into the top-10. Shaw goes down in the backfield. Rick Terry with the sack. He led the Tar Heels in sacks a year ago with eight, was third in the ACC. He's been a part of a defensive line that's been in the backfield the entire afternoon. You know, and you can't say enough about Carolina's defense. There was so much talk in the offseason about how much Carolina would miss Sean Bo uh, Boyd and their leading tackler in the secondary and Fuzzy Lee, and I think that motivated these guys. I mean, in the secondary, you got a freshman, sophomore, two juniors in the secondary, and, and they're pretty daggone talented. This would be the first time that Georgia Tech has been shut out under Georgia Lear. Hey, hey, Middleton, on. did he make the catch? Yeah, he held on. Boy, on his knees. At the 44-yard line, it's short of a first down, but that's a heck of a catch. And George, knowing that this one uh, in the books, time to take off the headset with a minute 28 left. Yeah, but what a job he's done. Only Northwestern and Toledo posted bigger turnarounds than Georgia Tech last year. And those... Of those three, only Tech had room for improvement. Northwestern and Toledo had 10 wins, as you know, and Tech was 6-5, and five, and he's going to get the job done at Georgia Tech. Took a 1-10 program and made it a 6-5 and five program a year ago. And 
now will move to two and one, but he's got two ACC wins already on this young season. Even after the Clemson win in the first game of the season, 45 to nothing, and that's against a team that they haven't beaten very often, still had people not believing in, in the Carolina team this year, but the win at Syracuse on the road really opened up everyone's eyes. The 11th ranked team in the nation right now, to me they should move into the top 10. Is it a top 10 team? You gotta believe it is. Yeah, I think it is because of the defense, and the offense is also pretty talented. But, uh, you know, Mac Brown made a good point yesterday when he was talking about Florida State. He said it's consistency. You know, you, you gain that reputation with consistency, and that's what he wants out of his program. Now, they've gone to four straight bowl games. Now, he wants to take it to the next level, and so he is gaining that consistency that will sell these fans and sell the nation on the fact that Carolina's for real. While we have a moment, would like to mention, send along our congratulations to our statistician, John Madry, who, along with his beautiful wife, Jennifer, celebrated their 10th anniversary last night. Some reason, John didn't go out to eat with us at the barbecue house. <laughs> McGregor with the carry across midfield to the 48 of Georgia Tech. Brian Wilkins, two rookies. Ron Rogers on the tackle. That's a fun to go. Well, he's going to unstrap. This one's over. This one's in the books. Put it there and get ready for Florida State. And you know he watched the Florida State game on Thursday night. Yeah, and, and to his credit and everybody on the staff, he kept the team focused on this game. Let them watch the Florida State game on television the other night and then just said, hey, click it off and let's get ready for Georgia Tech. And I think they were focused. Not easy to do, no. but you're right. Well, scoring their points in the first half, the defense dominating the entire afternoon. North Carolina as everyone wades onto the field and there's still seven seconds and the crowd starts to chant seven 16 to nothing to victory for the Tar Heels and now they start the clock and it runs out on Georgia Larry Mack Brown with a great start to the 96 season they move to 3 and 0 2-0 in the ACC, defeating Clemson, then Syracuse, and now Georgia Tech. How about 10 quarters this year already of shutout football for that defense? Chevrolet most valuable players. Keith Rooking of Georgia Tech, nine tackles unassisted on the afternoon. Dre Bly with three interceptions. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. A Chevrolet tradition. For Lewis Johnson and Tim Brandt, I'm Terry Gannon. So long, let's join John Saunders.